Salutations. Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Travis Hunter, joined as always by my co host, my sister, and my brother in law. Hi, I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. This week, we're broadcasting live from the crypt under Carfax Abbey discussing the 1931 horror classic, Dracula. This film was directed by Todd Browning from a screenplay by Garrett Fort based on the stage play by Hamilton Dean and John L. Balderston, adapted from the novel by Bram Stoker. After decades of stage plays and the unauthorized adaptation Nosferatu in 1922, producer Carl Limley Jr., son of Universal Pictures founder Carl Limley, became interested in adapting the property despite his father's hesitance. Thanks to an iconic performance from Bela Lugosi, this film provided the blueprint for future iterations of the character of Count Dracula and established many characteristics we now recognize as commonplace for vampires on film. The success of Dracula not only inspired Universal Pictures to create more horror films, but many critics rightfully consider the film instrumental in the birth of the horror genre. We'd like to thank friends of the show Michelle Moore and Lala Thomas for suggesting we journey into the world of Universal classic monsters. So, Dracula, what were your first impressions on the film? I feel like I probably saw this when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I know you and mom used to watch it when I was at school, but (laughs) I was at school. You Um, sound a little bitter, but... No, not at all. I was slaving away (laughs) in the salt mines of kindergarten. What, in like the easiest (laughs) math ever? (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't remember any of it if I did watch it when I was a kid. So this was really like a first viewing for me. Mm -hmm. And like you said in your intro, honestly, it's so weird to think of the fact that this is our reference point. Like there's vampires as we understand them before this and after this, like visually, you Mm -hmm. know? And so that's like, I kept thinking about that as I was watching it because, and you know, this isn't a spoiler or anything, but toward the beginning, they mentioned Dracula and they're like, Oh yeah, yeah. Count Dracula. And like, (laughs) it's so funny to think of a time where it's not like, did you fucking say Dracula? (laughs) It's just, it's crazy. It cracked me up. He's like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah because we know (laughs) but um it's just i feel like this is so special because we always talk about watching older films that clearly have been an influence Mm -hmm. but this is like kind of like king that if that makes sense it's not perfect don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not here to be like no this was the beginning it's like no No. yeah i know what this film did Mm -hmm. and bella lugosi is incredible right but I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There were parts that I was laughing out loud while I was watching it. But I like it. I had a fun time. Right. I had never seen this movie besides uh, like bits and pieces of what they show on TV or like uh, if some you know like in commercials or whatever. Yeah. Whatever mm-hmm. you see. And I've heard the guy's name before, the actor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I never, I just didn't know. I was like, I don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> well, now you do. So, yeah. yeah. So watching it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did. I did like it. But like you said, it's there. There's uh, some cheese. Yes. <laughs> kind of. I mean, so if this is what started it. So did a B horror movie start? <laughs> start it all? I mean. I yeah, think kind of like oh I think what's <laughs> that, yeah. what's surprising to me is that at the time this scared the fuck out of people. Yeah, that like yeah. They had I think uh they pulled like William Castle stuff with like smelling salts in the lobby because Nuh-uh. people were fainting wow. in the theater. And I don't I mean you really don't see any violence. No. You, you see, well, there's one bit of violence that is surprising to me. <laughs> <laughs> but the violence you expect to see in a vampire film, they cut away. No. Like you barely see, You. it's like implied. Yeah. Oh, it's completely yeah, implied. It's the yeah. implication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you've said that word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just surprising to me because I really expected, I mean, I'm not naive to the fact that this was what 1931 yeah. and i know that we're not going to be seeing fucking jason Voorhees no, level, no. Yeah. but i expected blood i think we see like one drop of blood yeah um, yeah i expected fangs i expected Something. biting no yeah. yeah i think that's what's so surprising to me is that there are things that you expect to see with a vampire right. yeah and while this established so many of them I don't not that I yeah, there's, yeah. I don't see any fangs I no. don't see uh, Bela Lugosi he doesn't have a widow's peak in this film 
No, right. he doesn't. You know, so I, it's like surprising. Were I, you personally upset I about the lack because of Widow's Peak? I remember going as a vampire as a kid and I didn't need to do anything. Yeah. Because <laughs> I already have one, but uh, I thought I got it from him. I did not. I did notice that too. I was like, there's no teeth. There's yeah. no... Um, but I will say, I don't know too much about the vampire lore and like, I, I know Nosferatu, of course. Yeah. But the pimp style, he's oh, like, yeah. you Dude. know, yeah. that stayed. Dracula so, is clean yeah, as fuck. Yeah, he so is. at least that image of Dracula stayed. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is what Dracula is. Mm -hmm. You might have made little improvements or changes here and there, mm -hmm. but the fashion, he was all, it, yeah. it yeah. was already... And what's crazy to me is that in the novel, from what I recall, he's kind of like an old, like almost kind of ugly dude yeah. that has like kind of like a Hulk Hogan mustache. <laughs> <laughs> like he does he call people brother? <laughs> like, is it a, Hulk Hogan? I'm gonna yeah, need that blood, brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so they they changed a lot in the adaptation, right? Because I know this is of the stage play, not of the actual novel itself, right? Yeah. Right. But I mean, the things that they put on screen they're so indelible that they have managed it's almost 100 years at this point yeah yeah this is actually the 90th anniversary is this year That's oh all right just to think nice. about that yeah, yeah. i do want to talk about my relationship with this film very quickly mm -hmm. for me along with halloween and scream universal horror was kind of my baptism into the genre mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh as you pointed out earlier <laughs> yeah they're like nay's gone no Woo, see, that, that is not true you were you, you were little bitches at no. school <laughs> Jeez. you were well we did say that once no <laughs> just kidding i'm kidding i'm all five in, like, all, in all in all fairness the universal horror didn't start until i was five and you were seven. Oh, that's right because you got to leave early yeah so, so no i was slaving away in second, second grade, grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. much different and the salt mines of second that's grade. when they brought in the salt mines yeah yeah. Yeah. second grade mm -hmm. but i would get out of school early at age five in kindergarten i guess they it's like a transition situation mm -hmm. yeah they want you to get used to being at school and so dad's at work you're still in school until 2 15 in the salt mines in the salt mines mm -hmm. so we have a couple hours to kill so mom picks me up we go home typically have some kind of lunch and then watch a universal horror movie and i distinctly remember watching dracula as a kid and I think that that formative thing, I, it's a matter of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. All of these films for me are always going to be kind of special because they remind me of that time right. that I watched them with mom. For sure. Do you remember if it scared you? I don't think it did. Yeah. I, I think it's because <laughs> I, we had already watched Halloween and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And but, Halloween is way scarier. Yeah, <laughs> no, it e is. <laughs> even at that, the movie's it's pretty tame it, like, is. it is it's not like mom's like okay they're ripping a throat out yeah. right now so <laughs> shield your eyes that never happened but i i think to be honest dracula is not my favorite universal horror movie mm -hmm. right i from my memory of them because i haven't seen them in years mm -hmm. i might have to give that to the invisible man or maybe frankenstein bride of frankenstein all right mm -hmm. I think now as an adult watching it, it's interesting to me because the problems I have with the film are not a matter of the time that it came from. They're more a matter of like plot structure. Yeah, right. dude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, for me, it's like when a movie is this old, uh -huh. you don't want to be like, oh, fucking come on. Man. No, but like yeah. there were times where i'm like wait a minute now i know i've been paying attention <laughs> yeah. i'm literally <laughs> taking notes i had look dude i had to write the, <laughs> i had to write the outline and so i had to rewind a lot because i'm like okay wait a wait, minute what i yeah. thought he was a bat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i i think we've all kind of tipped our hat to bela lugosi right. of course because yeah. he just did such an amazing job with this role it's almost like sometimes you see a role and you're like oh no you were born yeah. to play this role yeah. this dude was meant to yeah. be i think he is dracula I, re <laughs> <laughs> I read that he was buried in one of his caves oh nice. that is very sweet they said the thing that i was reading said that he wanted to be buried in his caves and then his son, Bela Lugosi Jr. Very cool. And his mother were like, no, we wanted him to. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <Why? laughs> no, I thought that was odd. Can he just let him have his yeah. wish? <laughs> <laughs> now, before we feast on the blood of this film, we would like to issue a warning for spoilers. Pod Mortem is a very in-depth podcast, and in thoroughly discussing horror films, we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two. 
If you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, let's head to the castle. So the film begins with the opening credits along with the title card, Carl Limley Presents Dracula. And I mean the full opening credits with the cast and everything. It was the style at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typically speaking now, it's just like, it would just be Dracula, a few things here and there as you see shit, but they got the full, I I was going to say bat, but it looks like the Batman logo. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) uh, That's, that was my very first note. Yeah. I was like, so obviously Batman ripped us off. Like straight up. (laughs) I never even put it together until I watched it this yeah. time, but I was like, that is straight up the Batman it, logo. It was distracting. I was like, that's, is that Batman? <laughs> You're like, where is Bruce yeah, Wayne? Right. The whole rest of the movie. Exactly. That, that's, JP's like, I didn't like it because <laughs> yeah, Bruce Wayne never right. showed up. He never came in. I looked into it because I was like, there's no way that they didn't see this. And it was written on a lot of sources that Bob Kane and Bill Finger were huge fans of Dracula. All right. And they actually modeled... Now, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but they said they modeled Bruce Wayne and Batman after Dracula and Bela Lugosi. But I'm like, I don't see Bela Lugosi yeah. and Batman at all. <laughs> that would be horrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, I didn't think he was a villain. I, no. I get... Yeah. All I see is the cape and the bat. Right. That's it. But there's also an error on here... Because Carl Limley is listed instead of the president, he's listed as the president. Uh. <laughs> and I'm like, this is we're wa- I was watching it on Peacock, right? And I'm like, they never fixed that. Why? Well, just left it. I'm huh? sure someone got fired. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't know Carl Limley. Like obviously, <laughs> but the stuff that I read about him, he doesn't seem like the most chill guy. Not particularly. So- <laughs> <laughs> All right. I did want to give a little bit of background because. This film is based on the play that's based on the novel. And so just a little background that I learned from a documentary called The Road to Dracula. Uh The character of Dracula was actually kind of invented in 1897 with Bram Stoker's novel. All right. He tried to get it on stage because I guess he was the manager of, I think it was the Lyceum Theater. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to get it on stage and they only performed it once in his lifetime for copyright reasons. And then they never performed Mm. it during his lifetime again. He died in 1912, and then it became a regular play in the 1920s. Oh, man, that sucks. It does suck, because he never got to really see it. Yeah. But so through this time, it's being a play, and everybody's performing it all over the place. Right. But then in 1922, I believe it's F.W. Murnau, German filmmaker, Uh makes Nosferatu. Right. Excellent silent film. Uh Uh-huh. I actually watched it a couple months ago. There's a lot of that in this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> me, and, yeah. me and JP were talking before. We're like, there are straight scenes. Yeah. That are oh, ripped. Yeah. But he do- he makes that film and it kind of, I don't want to say it makes a splash or anything, right. but a lot of people do see it. Mm-hmm. One person that did see it is the widow of Bram Stoker. And she was furious. Yeah, I bet. And yeah. she fucking started a lawsuit. Oh, shit. And based on the copyright infringement, the judge ordered that they destroyed all copies of Nosferatu. <gasps> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Which obviously they didn't do right, because, yeah. again, I watched it a couple months ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll get right on that. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah. We got a box. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing, though, is that in 1924 was when it really began to really shine as a play in the mm-hmm. States. In 1927, though, is when it hits Broadway and Dracula is played by Bela Lugosi. All right on stage Mm -hmm. and they decide that they're finally going to make it at universal and then when they do they don't want bela lugosi (laughs) well who do they want they wanted lon cheney at first Uh but then he passed away in 1930 and so obviously he couldn't be dracula he was i think he was ill and he kind of died unexpectedly oh shit i read on wikipedia that he now where um, was bela lugosi (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that don't I mean, I, it doesn't matter. He's like, this is my fucking role. <laughs> yeah. I th- th- don't laugh at this part. Oh, but he had throat cancer. But the thing that happened was that I guess he swallowed a lot of fake snow on production during one of his films. And it only exacerbated the problems. And he died later. What the fuck? So he didn't get it the fun way like Michael Douglas. <laughs> 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 We'd all be so lucky. Wow. But no, yeah. <laughs> no, he did not. But Carl Limley even sent a fucking telegram that said, not interested, Bella Lugosi. <gasps> Get out of here. That's just petty. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. But he wanted the role so bad that he took a massive pay cut to take it. And that was part of it because the it's 1931. Right. 
going through the depression at the time. And so the cheaper the film, the better. Right, right. It's another reason why they didn't adapt the novel because they really didn't have the money to. The play is a lot cheaper to film yeah. than all this lavish fucking Bram Stoker right. Dracula. So there's just a little background there. Bela Lugosi got the role that he rightfully right. should well, have had in the first place. He was already playing it. Yeah. yeah. And for him to have to get such a pay cut and be the fucking lead. Yeah. Like, yeah. My name is the name of the film. Yeah. Like, I'm the title <laughs> you know, of the I'm film. Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. There's people in this film that made four times what he did. That's fucking nuts. Like, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> but he, I mean, that shows how dedicated he was to the role. Right. Yeah. Which I mean is very commendable, but at the same time, I I, I would prefer he got paid well. <laughs> so, uh, do they get paid uh, for doing Broadway? Obviously, I know nothing about theater, so uh, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine they did. A lot of times, it would go from it's almost like a trajectory. Right. You're in a play, and then you maybe sign a contract with the studio. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. All so right. I would imagine that they got paid, but not a lot. Yeah. And I mean, even this, I mean, 1931 money, Bela Lugosi made $500 a week. Right. And so, I mean, God damn. Working for a universal picture, right. making 500 bucks, that it's doesn't al- seem like a lot. It's always so weird to, like, because I know that was a long ass time ago. Yeah. And, like, we're still able to see that. You yes. know what I mean? And,. I know we still have got, you know what I mean? Earth, we've still got a lot of time left here. Yeah. So I wonder, like, in the future, when they get to see, like, Nosferatu, <laughs> and I was like, what the Dude, fuck? Yeah. 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 There's this gonna... is what you're doing. Is <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the 200th yeah. anniversary and shit. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing I wanted to point out, and I know we're spending a lot of time in this opening, yeah. <laughs> but Swan Lake. That's what I wanted to talk yeah. about. Because I got very excited as yeah. soon as the music started. I thought it was so random and it's really the only music in the film. Yeah. Yeah. There's some later on, but it's it's all circumstantial. Yeah. I read that they were transitioning from the silent films to the talkies. I believe it was in Diabolique magazine I read that they wanted to keep the music sparse because they mm-hmm. didn't want the audience to get overwhelmed by all the sound. <laughs> what? Yeah. They're like, if they got people talking, they got yeah. music. What the fuck are we like? I feel like do, are we supposed to tear the theater yeah. apart? <laughs> what? I guess we're so just desensitized now yeah. because yeah. If, the, if if it's like a mediocre score or something, like you don't even really clock it while you're listening <laughs> right. to it. And so for the fact to, for them to be like, oh, that's too much yeah. music. Yeah. Calm down. You're, look, you're gonna scare the yeah. shit out of them. <laughs> they will burn this theater down. <laughs> But yeah, I just thought that was interesting. They did do a score in 1998. Philip Glass did it. And uh, I've seen some excerpts of it. I prefer the version without music. Right. Probably because I don't I'm not, I don't want to say like I'm a purist or anything. Right, right. But there was one scene that I watched on YouTube and the music was a little distracting. Yeah. Did you burn I your burned house down? I burned my house down. <laughs> <laughs> but we fade into a horse drawn carriage riding on a path through the mountains of Transylvania. Inside, a coach passenger played by Carla Limley, the producer's cousin, reads aloud from a book. Among the rugged peaks that frown down upon the Borgo Pass are found crumbling castles of a bygone age. A bump in the ride sends her into the laps of a husband and wife, causing Rinfield, played by Dwight Fry, to tell the driver to slow down. I just wanted to interject really quickly. And again, I read a lot of stuff and this is so old. I don't know <laughs> what's, what's real and what's not. But I read that so who is she to Carl Limley? Carl Limley, she is his niece, I believe. Okay. And then Carl Limley Jr., she's his cousin. The one reading the book. Yes. I All read right. that she's the first woman to have an opening line in a film. That's unbelievable. Oh, wow. Right? And that and I'm like, I, I don't have time to do the legwork. <laughs> <work. laughs> But, but big if true. Yes. <laughs> I read that she's because during the time horror, like if shit was supernatural, I learned this from a documentary, but I also learned it from friend of the show, Dr. Wolfula. Yeah. Hey. He had said that a lot of times supernatural films, like they would find a way at the end to be like, no, it was actually just real people. Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get too scared. Right. Yeah. Don't burn your house down. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the... <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> this was like the first time in a supernatural, legitimately thriller film, the first lines ever spoken is what she just said. Oh, all right. Cool. So she's got a lot of interesting yeah. qualifiers. But yeah. Again, big if true. <laughs> but after Renfield tells the driver to slow down, the husband of that group is like, no, don't. And he says that they need to reach the inn before sundown. 
When an older woman passenger asks why, he tells her that it's Valpurgis Night, a.k.a. the Night of Evil. Sounds like fun. <laughs> um, this dude is like intense. Yeah. yeah. A little too I mean, much. Like, I'll probably just yeah. walk the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah. It's like, actually, driver, don't slow down yeah. and then stop and let me out. Let me the fuck out. <laughs> but this is when he says Nosferatu and his wife throws her hand over his mouth. He tosses it off and continues... On this night, all the people in the town bar their doors and windows and pray to the Virgin Mary. The couple then crosses themselves. So he's already trying to warn them about some scary shit. Exactly. It's like he's the maybe he's the first harbinger. Yeah. <laughs> I I have that exact same point. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I did want to point out Valpurgis Night or Valpurgis Nacht is this is what I learned from my German professor anyway. Mm-hmm. It's basically a festival that kind of honors Saint Valperga. It's in different regions of Europe, and they have feasts and bonfires and parties and stuff mm-hmm. like that. In the past, though, people believed that it was a night for witches and evil, basically like Halloween. Right. What do you think of the origins of like pagan festivals back then? Right. Yeah. And how people freaked the fuck out and how people assumed that the knights were evil and used for witches. Mm-hmm. They were extra powerful or right, something. Right, right. Like they charged up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> But it is actually the halfway point to Halloween on the pagan calendar. All right. Which, um, you know, so maybe they're right. (laughs) I'm here for it. Either way. But uh, this is what they're fearing here. But we fade into a shot inside one of the homes of the village. An elderly woman kneels praying as a wife tends to a baby in a bassinet, and her husband hears the sounds of an approaching carriage. We watch from outside as the innkeeper, played by Michael Visseroff, and his wife, played by Barbara Bozicki, rush out to the street to meet the arriving patrons. There's also a flock of birds in the middle of the road. (laughs) I was like, no, Bart, please (laughs) don't. But thankfully, they, they got out of the way. But the carriage pulls and stops in front of the inn, and other townsfolk close their windows. A couple attendants remove luggage from the carriage, but Renfield tells them to leave his stuff there because he's going to Borgo Pass this evening. The fuck you are. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're the guy in the fucking thing. (laughs) The attendants look at each other like, is he choking? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But they do as he says, and the innkeeper has a word with the driver in Hungarian, but then takes that word back to Rinfield. As it turns out, the driver is frightened, and on behalf of the driver, the innkeeper suggests that he waits until after sunrise in the morning to head to Borgo Pass. Renfield says that he can't because the carriage will be waiting for him there at exactly midnight. The innkeeper asks who is sending the carriage for him, and Renfield tells him, Count Dracula. (gasps) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, the gasp is right. (laughs) The innkeeper, who has no poker face at all, maybe (laughs) poker wasn't invented yet, but (laughs) he's like, Count Dracula of Castle Dracula? (laughs) No, the other one. Yeah, it was a different guy. Jim Dracula, actually. Yeah. (laughs) His wife crosses herself after this, so it's clear that the town is well aware of Dracula and his exploits. But Renfield sees no issue with this, and this is when the innkeeper tells him that not only do the locals believe that the castle is full of vampires, but Dracula and his wives can shapeshift into wolves and bats. He claims they sneak out of their coffins at night and feast on the blood of the living. Renfield just shrugs it off as superstition, but a man leads out from a window, drawing everyone's attention to the setting sun. The innkeeper's like, sun's going down, we need to get inside, and just starts to rush off. Renfield says that he isn't afraid and that this is simply a matter of business. He bids them good night, but before he steps back onto the carriage, the innkeeper's wife offers him a crucifix and says it will protect him. He accepts it, and the carriage is off. As it disappears down the road, the townsfolk call out in fear and concern. I thought they were just talking shit. Like, stupid <laughs> ass. Like, yeah. Oh, Renfield, you <laughs> dumb <Yeah>. bitch. <laughs> right, I, he's not coming back. Well, mm-hmm. I was like, I had a couple things. I mean, first of all, complete disregard for everyone who lives here and knows. Yeah. I got to be honest. If You would have gotten back on I think I would have. Which I, okay, that's fine. My thing is, I thought it was fucked up that the driver was like, no, I'm too scared. And Renfield's like, no, nah, it's fine. And yeah. that was just it. Yeah. He should have been like, give me the yeah. reins. <laughs> it was just like, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're taking me. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Who is paying you? Yeah. He's <laughs> like, I will give you a one star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did also want to draw mention to the giant crucifix yeah. outside of town. So it's like, no, th- they mean this shit. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do have to say, if I'm Renfield... You know, I know that the business deal is real. I yeah. know that much. I'd be scared. 
Well, I mean, of course, everybody's trying to warn you and saying all this crazy shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing like when it's like, oh, that's just Bob. He's the town yeah. crazy. It's like, yeah, whatever. But the whole town is like, <laughs> dude, don't go over there. Dude, what's, what's funny? They're crossing yeah. themselves. Yeah. He could scan the crowd for like a one face that's like, nah, but everyone's like, no, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Like, no, they're telling yeah. the truth. Yeah, like, no, li listen go. to him. Yeah. So maybe I, maybe I should have. But we then get shots of a mountain path followed by exterior shots of Dracula's castle. These are all glass paintings. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I uh, I forgot, but you saying that reminded me. I When I was watching it, I was like, for the time, that looks fucking yeah. great. Dude, seriously. I, like, I know that's not real, Yeah, but that looks really good. I don't know how they were able to do it so well. Right. Because even the shot of the mountains, like the first time you see the carriage, yeah. that's not real either. Yeah. That's crazy. I was kind of blown it, away. It does look good, though. Mm -hmm. That did. I was like, how the fuck? <laughs> I was like, all right, all right. I, was, I see you. <laughs> I know we were like amazed with the birds and that right. was like 30 years later. Yeah. So holy shit. Yeah. But inside the castle, we view a crypt, smoke billowing as we press in on coffins resting on the ground. Hands reach out as old wood creaks and they begin to open. Nearby bugs and animals run for cover as Dracula's bride number one, played by Geraldine Dvorak, lifts her coffin open and rises up. She comes out of there with a full beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Well, we've we've established when you're a vampire, you're your best self. You're yeah. just hot forever. <laughs> like, Always. As long as you keep the blood. Right. right. You gotta keep the blood. Mm. As more animals screech in terror and hide amongst the bones, we see Count Dracula, played by Bela Lugosi, strike a pose adorned in a black cape as a tracking shot presses in silently. It's great. It's great. It is. Um, and again, I know it's we're thinking of the Draculas from our time. Yeah. But it was kind of, I was like, you're not going to have three wives sleeping on some dirt. I was like, really, dude? <laughs> they Where's got the it. velvet? Where's the, you know what I mean? Let's see inside that coffin, yeah, man. Well, uh, yeah, what, what, I know it's comfortable. I'm yeah. not you're not sleeping mm -hmm. out here in the fucking basement. What material is yeah. that? Yeah. I did. I thought it was interesting. Like moments like this, they play out in silence because the music. Right. But I feel like the intensity of the moment would be ruined by music. Right. His stare, like he... Look, as I said, not only does he embody the character, but he has a stage presence that like... He right. really does. And if you like that stare, you yeah. are in <laughs> luck. <laughs> but his other wives, number two, played by Cornelia Thaw, and number three, played by Dorothy Tree, join the fray. Dracula ascends a stone staircase to the upper level as we fade to black. So we've we've gotten a few sound effects here with the wood creaks, yeah, the animal squeaking and yeah, yeah. being afraid and everything. I wanted to point out something very unbelievable that happens because of one person that worked on this film. Mm -hmm. The guy who did the sound effects, right, is named Jack Foley. And I don't know if you know this, but anyone who does sound effects in film like this, they're called Foley artists. Because oh, of wow. him? Because of this nice. dude. I thought you were going to say he was like Mick, Mick Foley's no, grandfather. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that also would be cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's he, really cool, though. He told people to have a nice day. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how, like, when I say this film is old and classic, yeah. Yeah. fucking things that are still being used today were named after people that worked on that's this. That's really cool. It is. And I read that a lot of his methods that he used for this film and right. films like it are still in use today. Damn. If it ain't broke, don't fix yeah. it. Oh, no. But we then transition to a shot of Dracula, poorly disguised as the driver, waiting on a stagecoach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, at least cover your yeah. face, man. <laughs> Emphasis on poorly. Yeah. I really just could not understand that. But I, I did like the horses are black, naturally. You got a thick fog rolling in. Yeah. It's a very nice atmosphere. Right. But we see Renfield's stagecoach arrive and the driver fucking yeets Renfield's yeah. bags. <laughs> I was mad myself. That's... I was like, you really fucking throw my shit like that? Well, dude? the disrespect yes. that Renfield has okay. shown that man. I know, but dude, come on. He's I'd like, be throwing no, get bags out, too. Get out. I'm gone. So yeah. they're... It's already dark. It's yeah. midnight. So they're passing one star ratings back to yeah. each other. Yes. <laughs> But Renfield barely has enough time to get his shit, I guess, that he needs off yeah. before dude just hightails it to town. Yeah. Yeah, well. He's like, I'm going back to that village yeah. to talk shit about you. <laughs> <laughs> but Dracula peers at Renfield with bright eyes as he approaches. It's a very interesting technique that they used. Mm -hmm. 
it was Carl Freund, the cinematographer. Right. And they had very small, I guess, spotlights. They called them pencil spotlights. Uh-huh. And they aimed them directly at Bela Lugosi's eyeballs. Jeez. And kept him there yeah. for the yeah. entirety of the movie. <laughs> Pretty much. Some of these shots are great, though. Yeah. They are. But once Renfield confirms that it's the correct coach, he gives the driver his belongings, steps inside, and then they're off to the castle. We see them riding over rough terrain, and Renfield sticks his head out the window to ask the driver to slow down. That's all he's done all film so (laughs) far. Can you slow down? We know a lot about Renfield. Yes. He's not superstitious, Mm -hmm. and he doesn't like a fast game. He likes to (laughs) arrive alive. (laughs) But instead of the driver, he sees a bat gliding over the galloping horses. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> to me, this seemed like a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a lot. And how do you just sit back down like, oh, that's, yeah. that's, yeah, well, that's weird. Okay. Well, the thing is, is that he didn't peer his head over enough to see that there was no driver. Yeah. But why the fuck is Dracula doing this? <laughs> do you have to catch some wind now? Yeah, just, I, d- I didn't understand. Like He's just showing out. I guess he's like, oh, you wait. Yeah. <laughs> but Renfield's entire face is filled with nope. And he just retreats back inside. I love that he didn't even warn the driver that there's a bat out there. <laughs> I mean, rabies, COVID, whatever. Self-preservation. I guess so. But we see the carriage arrive at Dracula's castle, and when Renfield steps out to give the driver a piece of his mind, we see that there is not a driver. Again, he just yeah. accepts this. He does. <laughs> I'm so confused. See, okay, I already said that I would have gotten on the carriage. Yeah. Which might be frowned upon by a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at this point, I this is when I start to get alarmed. See, yeah. And just looking at that castle, I'm like, what, what business do yeah. you have here? Like, at this point, I don't know why Renfield is here, but it feels like he has no business yeah. right here. The funny thing to me is that the circumstances of it are they're fucking real estate man it's so dude (laughs) once once (laughs) you get there i was like oh this is hilarious yeah Yeah. i didn't remember why this took place no and as an adult it's the funniest shit (laughs) but before renfield can react to there not being a driver the door to the castle creaks open Renfield cautiously makes his way inside and appears almost insignificant as we get a shot of the massive interior of the castle Bats hover and squeak outside the window, and for some reason, armadillos roam. But thank, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this motherfucker is Texas Dracula. Yes, I was, I was like, what? Yeah. What's happening? We saw the possums earlier. Yeah. I might, yeah, I might have an answer. Okay, because I was very thrown by seeing an armadillo in this castle. Yeah. Yes. In Romania. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently, armadillo. I don't. I don't know how much of this is real and how much of it is just folktale. Right. But they would say that <laughs> Ken's probably all bullshit. <laughs> armadillos Armadillos? Armadilli? I don't know. I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna get our Texas <laughs> card revoked. <laughs> Armadilla. Uh, there you go. Uh, I'm a Texan. Mm-hmm. Um they would dig up freshly dug or freshly filled graves. Mm-hmm. And so people would say that they would dig all the way down and chew through your coffin. Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> I don't know a lot about yeah. armadillos, so, man. I mean, I've seen, I see them on the road a lot. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if they're like, yeah, because they like dead things. Like, I don't, I don't know what the motivation uh, was, but okay. Yeah. Bats, spiders, all mm-hmm. that shit. But I was like, one of these things is not yeah, like the no. other. I was quite surprised. I was as well. I was like, was this filmed in San Angelo? Yeah. Or? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dracula's got boots on. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> holding a Whataburger cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Dracula, holding a candle, calmly descends a large staircase behind Renfield, standing underneath a gigantic spider web. He introduces himself as Count Dracula, which sets Renfield at ease. For some reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, I this mean. This dude's present. In all fairness, this is the person he came to meet. Okay. Yeah. I don't you know. know. Yeah. He's got a He's, vibe. He does. But at the same time, if I'm like, I got fucking ghost drivers and armadillo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm happy to see who I came here to see. Right. <laughs> like, oh, you're real. Okay. okay thank cool, God. Cool. Yeah. Now, I would like you to know people in the village have been talking yeah. mad shit about you, sir. <laughs> But Renfield says that he doesn't know what happened to his luggage or the driver. But this is when Dracula formally welcomes him and beckons him to follow, turning back around and walking up the staircase. I do want to say very quickly, I I should have said it in the earlier scene when Mm -hmm. we saw him stepping out of the fucking coffin. They really played their hand a little too early, didn't they? Yes. 
I thought <laughs> I thought that when the villagers were warning Renfield, right. I thought that Dracula being bad or evil or something was going to be this huge like third act twist right, or something. Right. And so it's like, okay, we we already okay. Then we're foreshadowing like he's weird or mm-hmm. whatever. It's like no, <laughs> cat's out of the bag. Oh yeah, uh, armadillo's out of the bag. <laughs> he's a, okay, he's a vampire. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. And so this whole time I'm just waiting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then again, I guess people at the time, they're like, well, I'm not exactly sure what that yeah. means. I get. Well, they're like, I already saw this play. <laughs> <laughs> and he was Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> but a wolf howls loudly outside and Dracula calls Renfield's attention to them. Listen to them, he says. Children of the night, what music they make. Renfield looks a little uneasy as he inches his way up the stairs. Yeah. Not enough for my taste. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think that's a coyote. We've yeah. seen armadillo already. Yes, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but he watches as Dracula makes his way through the spider webs, almost magically without disturbing them, and then he cuts his own way through them as Dracula watches. The fact that he just walks through them yeah. like fucking Gwen Stefani. Leave a message <laughs> and I'll call you back. And then he lo- he just looks at the spider, the giant fucking spider yeah. web, mm-hmm. and then up at Dracula, and he's like, "Huh?" Like again, yeah. this dude is just too chill. L- the next line is where you're really gonna shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Because we see a spider zip through the web after Renfield's intrusion, and Dracula tells him, the spider makes a web for the unwary fly. The blood is life, Mr. Renfield. Renfield chuckles a bit, but still follows him yeah. up. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he, no. he, he, yeah. he, he just called you a fly. Like, yes. You're the yeah. fly. And he's literally saying, I'm going <laughs> <Yeah>. to. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't be clearer. Right. I'm the spider. Yes. Me. <laughs> Down <laughs> Dracula. What, what the fuck? It pans back to him. He's in a spider costume. <laughs> <laughs> what the That's fuck? the only way yeah. it could have been more obvious. He's man spider. Right. <laughs> But I, I feel like whatever business we had at this point is done. Yes. But we continue. Yeah. On the upper level, we see a desk, a clean stone floor, and a few candelabras filled with lit candles. Dracula remarks that Renfield might enjoy this setting a little better than the whole spider business downstairs. Renfield agrees and warms himself in front of a large fireplace. Renfield starting to make himself comfortable. Yeah. I'm like, whatever happens to you, you deserve it. <laughs> yes, I I don't have a lot of sympathy yeah. here <laughs> because I know what I would do. <laughs> but Dracula assumes Renfield is hungry, but he's actually more concerned about his luggage because it had all of his business paperwork in it. Dracula tells him that he took the liberty of having all of his luggage brought inside and then takes Renfield's cane, hat, and coat. Now, when the fuck did he bring the luggage inside? Yeah. And Renfield again. <laughs> yeah, like, all you right. got it, buddy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but Dracula leaves the room and Renfield sits behind the desk, which actually has a table setting for one. Yeah. Dracula returns with Renfield's suitcase, confirming that Renfield kept his arrival at his castle secret, which Renfield says he did, but he literally told told (laughs) everyone in town. I don't know why he's lying to Dracula. But everybody knows where you're at. (laughs) And wouldn't you be worried if you were Renfield? Because Dracula's like, good. (laughs) Now no one knows you're here, right? Fantastic. (laughs) But regardless of the lie. Dracula is overjoyed and tells him that he'd like to discuss the lease of Carfax Abbey. This is when I started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> because the fact of Count Dracula yes. having to deal with real estate issues is hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely. And the fact that he had to be like, now come at midnight, like that, yeah. <laughs> setting time after yeah, dark. I, like that's that's really funny. I am unavailable during most days. <laughs> <laughs> There's like an SNL skit in it there. It really somewhere. is. <laughs> He had to get a bank loan or so whatever. Carfax is the name. I know. <laughs> and again, I, I laughed at that as well. Because yeah. I'm like, now it's a, yeah, fuck, show, a fox. Yeah. Show me the Carfax. The, yeah. It should have been an armadillo. Right. <laughs> but Renfield assures him that all the paperwork is in order. All it needs is Dracula's signature, which again made me laugh as well. Yeah. That he's got to sign his name. But we then get a shot of Dracula, only his eyes properly lit, peering at Renfield, who hands the lease off hurriedly. As Dracula looks it over, Renfield says that he hopes that he brought enough labels for Dracula's luggage, but Dracula says he's only bringing three, uh, boxes. (laughs) Could not be more shifty. Yeah. (laughs) But he's actually chartered a ship to take them to England to depart tomorrow evening. Renfield tells him everything will be ready by then, and Dracula makes his way over to a bed, making sure the accommodations are perfect for Renfield. 
Renfield says they are, but as he goes to put the paperwork away, he accidentally gives himself a paper cut. We press in on Dracula, who takes notice of the wound <laughs> and begins to creep over to Renfield. Sir, you are acting very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> it was your Renfield for a moment. Yes. Yeah. Can you fucking imagine? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> like I- uh, you, see, you see his face? Just got off. <laughs> that guy, like, dude, he hurt He himself. really did, yeah. yes. Luckily for Renfield, the crucifix given to him by the innkeeper's wife dangles out of his pocket and Dracula shields his eyes from it. Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this this made me laugh out loud because Renfield assumes that Dracula is just repulsed by the sight of the yeah. wound. He's like, it's not that bad. So he thinks Dracula's like, <laughs> yeah. Because he doesn't like blood. <laughs> yeah. Have you he seen how this motherfucker looking, lives? Yeah, yeah, he, was, was, <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at Renfield like a cheeseburger two he was. seconds ago. He was like, hmm. <laughs> He's making his way over. Yeah. But he tells him it's just a scratch and then he sucks the blood off his finger. So again, even back then, people were sucking their own blood. Yeah. It makes you evil. He is evil. So that's what my mom said. <laughs> But it's funny because as he sucks the blood off his finger, Dracula peers at him like, give me a slice. Uh, I'm telling (laughs) you his face. He's ready. What the fuck? (laughs) As we brought up previously, this scene is basically ripped completely from Nosferatu. Yeah. Yeah. Like down to like even the crucifix dangling. Like it's a lot. It was... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was funny seeing it. I was like, I've seen that before somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it was just silent that time. But Dracula then offers Renfield some very old wine, which he accepts, but notices that Dracula doesn't pour a glass for himself. When asked, <laughs> Dracula tells Renfield, I never drink wine. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't pause long enough. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I honestly, again... How much more do you need? <laughs> and you're supposed to sleep here, dude. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. you got absolutely fucking not. An entire bed made for you and everything. <laughs> but Renfield drinks from his glass as Dracula's eyes stare into his soul. I was laughing here because I felt like they kept using that same yeah. close up over and over again. <laughs> well, the thing is is that it's perfect. So yeah. they're like, just throw just, it. Yeah, yeah, keep doing it. There is a very odd editing thing that they do later that I feel like <sighs> We'll get to it, but it's honestly, again, they knew better. I don't yeah. know what they were doing at the point, but we'll talk. Renfield says the wine is delicious, which prompts Dracula to make his exit. It's just blood thinner. <laughs> <laughs> but they say goodnight to each other, and as Dracula leaves, Renfield appears a little unwell. He goes to open a window to get some fresh air, but behind him, we see a door creak open. Creeping through fog are Dracula's three brides, long dresses dragging behind them. Renfield opens the window only to see a bat flapping around, almost antagonistically squeaking at him. <laughs> it's talking shit. It yeah. is. <laughs> but it just flies away after that. Completely overcome, Renfield faints and the brides inch closer. Dracula appears then in the window, waving the brides away, and as fog billows behind him, he descends upon Renfield and we fade to black. He's like, "Uh uh-uh, this one's mine. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Why couldn't he share? It's a whole human. That was so uh, fast acting. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because he took a sip and he was just out. (laughs) Yeah, should have checked your drink, man. He should have. Always. You take a sip of this first. Yeah. Yeah. But he never drinks. Why? Why? (laughs) (laughs) I I am suspicious of the fact that he never even poured himself one. Yeah. Yeah. Pour yourself one and then just take the cup with you. Well, why do you have this old ass fancy wine if you don't drink if you don't drink wine it's his knockout juice dude <laughs> that's I'm, I'm good i don't drink at all and i'm sorry but what we learn about dracula later that he can just kind of hypnotize folks yeah why did he need He's the a- wine <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that would have made this better is mm-hmm. if when he got close to him he held dracula's hand and he was like what are we <laughs> <laughs> just looking at it. He's like, no, you're supposed to be asleep. Yeah, dude, yeah. that was the whole point. Yeah. And again, it was a love potion. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very odd to me. We, of course, don't even see him get that close no. to his neck. No, yeah, that was that was interesting to me. And this is like a repeated, yeah. like this yeah. is what it is. They're like, no, he's eating, trust yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to see yeah. it. But in the next scene, we see a ship sailing over raging waters and hear the shrieking sound of harsh winds. We get on screen text that reads, aboard the Vesta, bound for England. We watch as waves crash onto the ship's crew as they try to keep it steady. Beneath the deck, Renfield, now seemingly insane and subservient, lifts open Dracula's coffin, calling him master and telling him that the sun has now gone down. Okay. 
Dracula said that they were leaving the following night, right? right. Yes. So in the span of one day, <laughs> <laughs> Renfield went from an autonomous real estate agent. Right. Mm-hmm. Running a business. To running a business to master. Well, he's the OG Igor. Pretty right? I, Yeah. I mean, basically, what yeah. is this? Is this the wine or Dracula's bite? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, he is out in the sun helping them do their stuff. So what is... So he's... Not, I, Again. Don't, I don't know. I'm very confused yeah. by Renfield. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, this is probably tipping my hand too early. Or what is it tipping? I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Renfield is my absolute favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> he has course. a lot of character yeah. work, man. <laughs> and he gets to play two different dudes. He yeah. does. I prefer the second one. <laughs> <laughs> And you can kind of tell he's crazy because his hair is in his face a little yeah. bit. Yes. He's like, no, now I'm That's crazy, all- yeah. Redfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so is that like a Spider-Man 3 situation? It is, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. But he doesn't <laughs> have As long as he eyeliner. doesn't dance uh, in the street. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> but Dracula blindly reaches his hand out as Renfield opens the coffin completely and he rises up. As the crew fights to control the ship, Renfield asks Dracula to keep his promise once they get to London that he will get lives. Not human, of course but small ones with blood in them. <laughs> so again, are yeah. you a vampire or not? I don't understand. Is, or is he like this weird, like in between? <sighs> I guess. I don't know, but he's like, I'm a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you only put one fang in? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so confused. Dracula just seems really fucking like, dude. Like he just, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he stares at him like a disappointed father. He yeah. does. And he's just like, why did I fucking, yeah. <laughs> whatever I did, I why did I do I it? I should have just yeah. let my wives <laughs> eat you. <laughs> yes. But he promises loyalty to Dracula as Dracula just stares down at him again with very strong buyer's remorse. (laughs) (laughs) He walks away watching the crew kind of get their ass kicked by these gigantic waves. And he has a very diabolical look in his eye. I read that that footage was borrowed (laughs) from a silent film. Well, the way that well, you know, like silent films would do that weird sped up thing. You can tell, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's literally from another movie. And it makes sense when you look at it because it does have kind of, not a choppy, right. yeah. but enough to where you're like, I don't know that they... Yeah. <laughs> it, does, it, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't Filmed look this. like the rest of the film no. at all. No, it doesn't. But the Vespa arrives in England and we hear a group of men board the vessel remarking on what they found aboard it. In shadows, we see the captain of the ship dead and tied to the wheel. The harbor master, who is played by Todd Browning in a cameo role... Uh- uncredited i gotta be honest with you man 90 yeah. percent of the cast is uncredited <laughs> it, it seemed i'm exaggerating because i had to write the fucking right. those are that's difficult. it was really yeah. really hard but he assumes that a storm made short work of the crew but we know better yeah big shocker but i'm not a sailor yeah <laughs> um, is it customary for the captain to be tied to the wheel i've never seen that so I don't know. Because they really underreact. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, is that a thing? Well, he's like, I'm the harbor master. Yeah. <laughs> I am land. <laughs> that was... Uh, he's like, what you guys do in the... I yeah. was like, nobody... That's not weird. I feel like... See, part of me is like, I can see why it would look like a, like a straight murder scene. Yeah. But at the same time, you're like, well, with the harsh winds, maybe being tied to the yeah, wheel. That's, what, that's why I'm like, is that a thing? Might be smart. Maybe. Let us yeah. know. Yeah. Any... 1930s uh, <laughs> sailors can reach out. We'd really appreciate it. But beneath the deck, Renfield leans down to Dracula's coffin and tells him that they've made it to England. The men on the deck hear his maniacal laughter, ripping open a hatch to find him staring at them and letting out a low little laugh. As he stares, they're like, this man is mad. And they're uh, <laughs> not even... beat his ass. They don't even really care. No, not really. They're just like, oh, wow. Like, this motherfucker is not a joking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I would assume. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> because they don't know anything about no. Dracula. I just felt maybe I'm... I mean, I can acknowledge that I'm a pretty dramatic person, but just their reactions to everything they yeah, found on this boat was not enough for no. me. No, I, I'm going to need that at a, about an eight. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, fucking look at him, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> Like, man, the storm and this guy's crazy. It's like, no. (laughs) What? I will say that shot of him peering up at them, it's pretty creepy. It is. I'll give you that. Even in, you know, 90 years later. Right. But we then get a shot of a newspaper reading, crew of corpses found on derelict vessel, telling the arrival of the ship at Whitby Harbor in London. Crew of corpses is a great band name. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Somebody snipe it up real quick. Renfield, however, is named as the sole survivor 
And I do also want to point out that they call attention to his apparent desire to eat bugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which they somehow, they, this is what made me laugh, is that they know that it's for the purpose of drinking their blood. Yeah. I, Renfield, from the moment that he becomes this limbo vamp human, yeah. whatever he is, <laughs> He doesn't care. Like he'll no. tell. Yeah. He's telling everyone. It's like I need bugs. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck what are you talking about? But obviously, this new habit has earned him a spot in Doctor Seward's sanitarium for observation. Right. right. They make sure you have time to read that. They do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have this thing that I always do whenever I see text on screen. I pause it. Right. So I can read it because I don't know how much time they're going to give me. Yeah. But then when I unpause no, it, it's there for like <laughs> fifteen minutes. Yeah. You had time. <laughs> But that evening, we get on-screen text reading London. In the foggy night, we see a flower girl played by Anita Harder calling out to passerbys trying to make a sale. Now, she's like, flower for your buttonhole, sir. Yeah. And I'm a child. So. Yeah, you thought butthole. I did. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> so flower did for you. your butthole. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, the 30s were weird. <laughs> <laughs> fucking wild. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes, my butthole is <laughs> quite crispy or whatever. <laughs> Crispy. I don't know, fragrance, dude. man. Fragrance. <laughs> there yeah. we go, yeah. Quite fragrant. But <laughs> <laughs> the flower girl is then approached by Dracula, who seemingly hypnotizes her with a stare, and he slowly swoops down upon her, pushing her behind a pillar as his mouth nears her neck, and we hear her scream. Yeah, he, he is not concerned about the butthole flower. No. <laughs> no. I was He's like, just... my butthole is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just surprised that he just did this yeah. on the street. Dude, I... Nobody I, reacted. No. no. And I imagine... I don't know why I imagine this is near the harbor. Right. And so there's got to... It's London. Yeah. yeah. I just... I mean, even Jack the Ripper had the decency to, to take people somewhere. Right, right. Like the balls. This is, she was just... This is prime real estate if she's chosen this oh, place yeah, yeah, to, to sell. sell her butthole yeah. flowers. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> We're just, just calling them that now. <laughs> it was... Uh, I was like, God damn, dude. No, you know what sucks is that buttholes are going to be funky because she's out of business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what also made me laugh is we, I've, we're we just coming off the news of Renfield being institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dracula is just like, well, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, just no wandering shit. around. Don't keep a low profile. Then, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in another film, this would be him trying to get Renfield out. Right. To keep him as a, a slave he or to keep him no. <laughs> yeah, or to keep him from telling people that there's a fucking vampire yeah. in London now. Well, he already had buyer's remorse. Yeah, yeah. no, he's, he's like, just... no, take him. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, <laughs> gotcha, I fucked bitch. up. Yeah. He's like, I'm mature enough to admit that yeah. I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he's just living his life, man. But in the next scene, we see Dracula walking through the streets of London and with his cane you can tell by the way he uses his walk yeah <laughs> <laughs> but people pass him by unfortunately for him a crowd gathers as a policeman blows his whistle having just discovered the corpse of the poor flower girl i just love that that murder wasn't even his whole night like no. you still got shit to do dude i do one thing a day I'm I, think. Done. Uh, I can't <laughs> and the th i did want to look it up because again you had said jack the ripper that's exactly what i thought of yeah that was 40 years before this before, movie came out yeah which again Damn. when you think of the time yeah 40 years yep. that's not anything yeah. yeah for us that's the 80s i don't want to talk about that all right <laughs> <laughs> But we watch as Dracula arrives at the theater just in time to score a seat for the London Symphony. According to IMDb, these are the same sets used for the Phantom of the Opera silent film. Oh, oh shit. Cool. All right. They would eventually use these sets for Dracula, I think, for the next 10 or 12 years. Damn. Like, so when Universal built shit, they're like, no, we're yeah, keeping. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put a lot of money into this. But an attendant walks Dracula behind the box seating. In one of the box seats, though, we see John Harker, played by David Manners, Lucy Weston, played by Francis Dade, Dr. Seward, played by Herbert Bunston, and Mina, which is Seward's daughter and Harker's fiance, played by Helen Chandler. Now that we've met Mina, mm -hmm. do you guys have any guesses for who wanted to play Mina? I know this, and yeah. it is kind of upsetting that it didn't it's happen. It's incredibly upsetting, mm -hmm. and do you know why? Yes. Mm -hmm. Betty Davis... Oh, wow. Betty fucking Davis, okay? And she was under contract with Universal, so it would have made sense. Right. Yeah, but Carl Limley said that she wasn't sexy enough. 
What? Yeah. Well, I beg to do yeah. yeah. I, I don't know why I yeah, almost yeah. went into Hitchcock there. Yeah. <laughs> it was like half Needs Hitchcock. More, more <laughs> <trooper. Yeah. laughs> Needs more better. <laughs> but yeah, I was very upset. Yeah. I, I love that people listening are like, why the fuck are they doing yeah. Hitchcock <laughs> on Dracula? <laughs> and Betty Davis was not yeah. in it. <laughs> like, this, you just, just hang with us. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just stick with us. You'll be all right. <laughs> I did read somewhere, though, that the actress who played Mina is the highest paid actor in the film. Oh, wow. And right. interestingly, it was David Manners, who plays John Harker, mm-hmm. who is being paid for this film about four times what Bela Lugosi is being play- paid. You yeah. barely see this. You yeah. barely see this, dude. I would understand if you're like, well, you know, the actor who plays, we'll meet him later, but yeah. Van Helsing. Yes. Yeah. That I would that get. I get. Yeah. But mm, all right, the highest paid should have been fucking Renfield. Okay, <laughs> it's like I'm playing two characters. <laughs> Let me be clear. <laughs> if you were writing the checks, yeah, you give them a bonus. I would. But behind them, and separated by a curtain, we see the attendant entranced in Dracula's gaze, and he tells her, "After you deliver the message, you will remember nothing I now say. Obey." As she opens the curtain and walks into the private box, Dracula takes his cape off and hangs it up. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. <laughs> He's following the rules. Yeah. yeah. He's like, we're at an this is an opera yeah, house. Right? <laughs> <laughs> not an animal. Well, not right now. Not right now. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a bit. But the attendant tells Dr. Seward that there's a telephone call for him and he gets up to answer it. Mina says that if it's from home to say that she's gonna be spending the night in the city with Lucy. Dr. Seward steps out of the box and is approached by Dracula, who introduces himself, saying he just so happened to overhear Seward's name and confirms that he's in charge of the sanitarium in Whitby. As it turns out, Carfax Abbey, which Dracula has purchased, adjoins with the sanitarium, so he says it's a pleasure to meet him. The pleasure's all his. But it's pleasure a pleasure to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> he does, just looking all creepy and rhyming, and he's just up there. I'm like, dude, how like, what the fuck? <laughs> who let you over here? <laughs> I do. I do. It made me laugh as well because he introduces himself. He's like, I'm Count Dracula. And Harker's like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. His face is yeah. like, oh, shit, a count? Maybe it was just me. I felt a lot of sexual tension in this balcony. Was it oh, just me? Well, in the balcony. Yeah. Well, well, between who? Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everyone. It was palpable. That's, I think, one thing. I mean, obviously, it's the 30s. They can't really get around it. But <laughs> I mean... As we know, Dracula, Dracula, fuck. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, but it's not, it's, it's vaguely hinted at here with some lines and some scenes, but right. Dracula's a little horn dog. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But Seward introduces Dracula to his daughter, Lucy and Harker. As Seward goes to answer the phone call, Harker tells Dracula that the Abbey probably needs extensive repairs. Dracula says that he'll do very little repairs. <laughs> yeah. He's like, like, what the fuck? Well, I won't be doing yeah. that. <laughs> that made me laugh because he's just like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ever heard of small talk, Drac? I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm all yeah. <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, well, he does have a manservant for that now. Fucking Renfield's hammering nails yeah, and shit. But, but <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I took it as no, no repairs will be made. Yeah. That's how I took it. Well, don't count on it. <laughs> yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> he does say that the disrepair will remind him of his old castle in Transylvania. Lucy says the Abbey reminds her of an old toast. The walls around her bear, echoing to their laughter as though the dead were there. Mina's like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> what, the fuck? And what is happening? Parker's like, that's a nice sentiment. Yeah. <laughs> he is so like nervous and afraid. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. I just feel like Dracula stepped into the room and everybody is just fucking topsy turvy. Like yeah, I, the uh, energy is completely shifted. Yeah. Have they had some wine before? That? <laughs> yeah. But it is because they were just enjoying the opera and now everything's like, strange. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, in all what? fairness, like Lucy's kind of fucking shit up right now yeah. with what she's saying. I think Lucy is like horned up. Yeah. That's how oh. I took it. Yeah. Oh no, that's especially the way, yeah. more late because I'm like, are they about? Like it was. Like, <laughs> Uh, like, I know the Hayes Code or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> but Lucy says that there's more. Pass a cup to the dead already around for the next to die. Mina's like, all right, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's about enough of that. This is when Dracula says to die must be glorious because there are things far worse than death. <laughs> 
<laughs> they don't have yeah. <laughs> anything to say to this. Again, small talk, dude. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cool. He's like, I've heard. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> I've heard tell. He just stands there, though, as the show begins again, and nobody remarks how fucking weird any of nope. that was. But Dracula just stares at Lucy, a smile stretching across his face as we fade to black. He's like, I'll be seeing yeah, you. Yeah, I don't know that girl, dude. <laughs> no, he does not. <laughs> Knows her well enough. In the next scene, though, we're in Lucy's room. As a music box plays in the background, Mina cracks a joke, mimicking Dracula's creepy-ass statements and his accent. She's a regular Bill Hader. (laughs) (laughs) But Lucy shrugs it off, saying that she finds Dracula fascinating. I told you she's into it, dude. (laughs) I think fascinating is a coded word, like in the 30s. I think she's trying to say something else. What do you mean? I think she wants to bang Dracula. Okay, well, no, yeah. yeah. Okay. We're yeah, on the same page. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just making sure. I was sure. like, what? Yeah. In the 30s, they're like, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> on the other side of it, though, Mina says that she prefers regular guys like John Harker and leaves Lucy to daydream about Dracula and his castle in Transylvania. <laughs> Outside, we see Dracula walking past a policeman staring up through the gates at Lucy who opens her window. He's like... Of course. Like, yeah. I'm Is like, this okay. Joe Goldberg? I, I said, okay, Jokula Goldberg. <laughs> God damn, dude. He's going to start fucking... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Batting off? <laughs> yes. Yes. Inside her apartment, Lucy lies down in bed, cracking open a book. Outside her window, we do see a bat hovering in the fog. <laughs> <laughs> As she drifts off to sleep, the bat flies inside. We pan over from Lucy fast asleep and see that the bat has transformed into Dracula. He creeps closer to her, and as his face reaches her neck, we fade to black. The audacity of this dude. Yeah. Like, you're not full, though. Like, you. He just killed the flower girl uh-huh. tonight. That was earlier today. Well, that was yeah. that was dinner. This is dessert. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, he's like, hello, you. Yeah. <laughs> but we cut to an operating theater where dozens of doctors are seated, watching as Seward confers with a team of surgeons. Lucy lies on the operating table as they declare another death. All right. <laughs> I... Uh, did not realize that this was Lucy until way later. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? I, I okay. kind of I'm no, I kind of. Like, I was like, so I was like, what happened now? What? Because Lucy was not <laughs> the only one that died that night. No, she wasn't. And well, so, another death. But yeah. Also, the last time. Well, not the last time, but when he dramatically swooped down on Renfield, that was just the beginning of exactly. Renfield. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> that's when he became his true self. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I did not realize that this was Lucy. I when I saw that it was Lucy, I was like, God damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like cuz I again, he has brides. Right, right, right. I thought he was going to make her his like vampire bride. Yeah. yeah, so did we just forget that he has three wives because do we see them again? <laughs> they didn't forget. They're like, "Where yeah. the fuck is he?" <laughs> But to answer your question, no, we do not see them again. (laughs) But after failed transfusions, Lucy's cause of death is determined to be an unnatural loss of blood. As they inspect her with a magnifying glass, a doctor concludes, on the throat of each victim, the same two marks. Interesting. (laughs) Interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Now, we never see these marks. No. Did we already? No, we don't. Did we already talk about the fact that when we were kids so i don't want to speak for all of us but when i was a kid i thought that there were like straws inside the fangs i just want to point out i've written <laughs> on my script now i can't be the only person on earth <laughs> who thought vampires had like holes in their teeth right like they use them like tiny straws <laughs> it's literally in my notes i think it must have been this scene that caused it for me as a kid to start to think that well because i mean like <laughs> and all the vampire media I mean, like maybe now recently it's a little more violent where you right. see them just kind of like yeah. it out, but it's just very neat and it clean. Is. Yeah. You poke the holes and yeah. then the blood is gone. And then you slurp it up. I didn't realize until probably I was too old to admit how old right. I was, <laughs> that the fangs are just to puncture the hole right. and then you slurp the yeah. blood out. Well, yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> you know He's like, I don't understand. I, why. Uh, the- <laughs> I, but I gotta be honest. I mean, <laughs> the truth of how that's done is way sloppier and honestly yeah. disgusting. But like, 
<laughs> then what? the fangs aren't really special. Like you could just no. bite someone with normal with teeth. regular teeth. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but I I see. I thought it was like they bit you in a specific place. Uh huh. And they punctured like a your vein yeah, or something. Well, then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out that I did see a tweet from Emily Fleming from Good Mythical Morning. I love her. She's great. I saw it, I think it was like a few months ago, and she tweeted that exact thought about the oh, straws. No. And <laughs> I feel less stupid. I have never felt more seen. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a lot less stupid. But yeah, because, well, but the thing is, is that now the way that they do it and show everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's wasting a lot of blood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's got to be a cleaner way to do yeah. that. Yeah, and they do it so fast, though. Now that you bring it up, the two small holes. Yeah. How much blood do we have in the body? And you're getting that in like out of two what? little holes. Yeah. yeah, in like 30 seconds because they do it and it doesn't last very long. And well, it's like a fountain drink. I mean, you wouldn't want yeah. the whole cup to come out at once either. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Or it's like um, vaults of horror. Yeah. Just tap it like a keg. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Much better than the frozen <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but that next morning, we're at the gates of Seward Sanitarium. We move through the sprawling grounds, eyeing random nurses, orderlies, and patients. But the serene morning is broken by the sounds of Rinfield's screams. <laughs> we sweep up to his window where Martin, played by Charles Gerard, is confiscating a spider from Rinfield. This might be an unpopular opinion. Just okay. let him have it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you hurting? I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, how much blood is in a spider? I don't know. Not a lot, yeah, I imagine. I don't know. And, but I will say though, because Renfield is begging him to stop and Martin tosses it out the window, but Renfield cries like a <laughs> child yeah. at the sight of this spider being thrown out the window. I was like, what well, happened, how long did it man? take him to catch it? That's like, true. I mean, oh, that's yeah. just mean. He was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like he was that's broken. Like, that's yeah. filling for like a spider. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, a bug is filling, but this is a grown man. Yeah. But I'm still I, he, confused as to why he needs it. Now it's like man can't know. live on bug alone. But does he have <laughs> to live on bug? Is this a want? On blood. Yeah. Because he's I'm in so, the sunlight I'm, right I'm, now. I'm really confused. See, that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand... Not only, <laughs> not only is he in the sunlight, but he's still wearing suspenders. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't give him the uniform he, yet. He is a patient here, yeah. right? Uh-huh. <laughs> that was really weird. Like, you might want to take those away. Yeah. <laughs> I did want to point out that the sweeping through the halls of, or not the halls, the path, mm. the entryway of the sanitarium is really the most active that the camera gets in this film, aside from a few tracking shots. Yeah. That's a fair point. Carl Freund was the director of photography, and I feel like there's more to him than what Todd Browning allowed him to do. Mm. According to Wikipedia, Carl Freund was the inventor of something called the Unchained Camera, which basically allowed for tracking shots Mm -hmm. and shots in motion and everything. But you really don't get that here. No. No. Another thing that's very interesting is we kind of have ourselves a little Spielberg Hooper situation. (laughs) Because... I believe it was David Manners, who plays Harker, had done an interview with a film historian. Right. And he had said, I don't really remember Browning directing much. And he said that Freund was really the director of the film. I don't mean to... What the fuck? Browning's not one of those guys that speaks up a lot. (laughs) He's he's not a take charge kind of guy. (laughs) But if you look on IMDb, you see that Freund is credited as the uncredited co-director. Oh, man. So I don't know what to make of that. I do know that Freund went on to be the director of photography for I Love Lucy... Okay. I like I love Lucy. Yeah. And apparently pioneered the style of multi camera sitcoms that we know today. Oh well, all right. he also directed The Mummy, which I should have led with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I love Lucy. I love Lucy's yeah. pretty good, yeah. I love Lucy's great. <laughs> it is. It's good. But after Renfield loses his mind about losing this delicious spider, Martin <clears throat> tells him that he should be ashamed of himself. He's like, you've graduated to spiders now? Flies aren't good enough? I feel like the abuse is not helping anything. Yeah. (laughs) Not really. (laughs) Renfield, though, he's like, dude, spiders are where it's at now. Yeah. (laughs) So don't. (laughs) Why don't you mind your own business? (laughs) But Martin tells him to have it his way like it's Burger King. And the scene just kind of ends very abruptly. 
Elsewhere, we find Professor Van Helsing, played by Edward Van Sloan, pouring liquid into a small tube and running some kind of test. I was like, Van Helsing? Yeah, yes. so this is where I was kind of... Uh, and I... Oop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, so he's a scientist guy. Yeah. I was like, I thought he was a... Uh... He's not Hugh Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny to me because, dude, again, I think it's just the contemporary mindset of Van Helsing. I right. imagine him fighting these monsters. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, but, Dracula's about yeah. to get a run for his money. <laughs> I was like, wait. Kicked. No, what? not really. This dude's old and kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Interesting thing as well, Edward Van Sloan played Van Helsing on Broadway with Bela Lugosi. Uh. <laughs> so there you go. Nice. But men, including Dr. Seward, are gathered around Van Helsing's table as one of the other men reads Latin from an old text. Van Helsing drops the bomb, telling them, gentlemen, we are dealing with the undead. One man is like, Nosferatu? And Van Helsing's like, yeah, the undead. (laughs) It's like I just said, vampires. (laughs) The fact that these doctors... Mm-hmm. are sitting or, or scientists or whatever yeah. are sitting around and talking about fucking Nosferatu like oh no yeah remember yeah. like that <laughs> was hilarious to me from what I heard I think that Nosferatu was a word that was used in Bram Stoker's Dracula right <laughs> but I love the idea of them having seen the German yeah. expressionist film <laughs> they're like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. F.W. Murnau yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do want to point out that Van Helsing says that the two wounds on the victim's throat right are the M.O. of the vampire and he describes the wound as white with red centers, which only lends credence to our straw theory. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving up on no, it. No, I'm, I'm a firm believer. But Van Helsing tells Seward that Renfield, whose blood he just tested, is convinced that he has to devour living things to sustain himself. Seward doesn't go in for all the vampire talk, though. But Van Helsing says that he might be able to prove the superstitions of yesterday can actually become the realities of today. Later in Seward's office, Seward tells Van Helsing that Renfield has only been snacking on insects and bugs, never humans. But Van Helsing says that's as far as they know. Apparently, (laughs) (laughs) Renfield frequently escapes from his room and is gone for hours. Nobody knows where the fuck he's going or or what he's doing. What kind of place is he running here? Yes. The fact, okay, that's hilarious by itself, dude. I was quite tickled. He's like, now hold it there, doctor. (laughs) And even further tickled by the fact that he comes back. Yeah. (laughs) If you sneak out, just leave. He's like, no, I'm I'm supposed to be. All the juicy (laughs) spiders are in there. (laughs) (laughs) But this is when Martin brings Renfield into Seward's office. Van Helsing remarks that Renfield looks better than the last time when he saw him, and he says that he's actually feeling better. Van Helsing says that he's here to help and extends his hand for a handshake, and Renfield shakes his hand, saying that he's grateful for his help, but then rips it away when he realizes that Van Helsing is curiously studying it. <laughs> he's not fucking yeah. happy about no, he's it, like, dude. He's not down for that shit. And Renfield does not look well. No, no. he does not. He's like, you look better than last... I'm like, God damn it, uh, yeah. <laughs> How <laughs> bad was he? <laughs> fucking bat he's eating some spiders and now yeah, he's you know he's right. starting to feel like himself his again bat. but renfield then begs dr seward to send him far away from the sanitarium it's like well you can leave whenever you want <laughs> yeah <laughs> clearly yeah. but he says that his cries might disturb mina and then it might give her bad dreams i was like is this a threat what? yeah, yeah. what I are didn't... you talking about yeah I've never seen him meet Mina. He hasn't. Yeah. Well, he does leave a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. They're meeting for coffee and right. shit. But this was and when spiders. <laughs> <laughs> this was when I'm like, I know I've been paying attention. Yeah. Yes. Y'all don't know each other. Nope. I, I was just, I was really confused. And why is he? T- <laughs> Renfield cannot hold water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just fucking spilling yeah. all the tea. He is. And he's again using her name. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm very confused <laughs> by this no. development. But their meeting is broken up by the sound of a howling wolf, and we see a shot of the sun setting on the horizon. Back at Dracula's castle, the man himself is awoken from his slumber, climbing out of a box. Did they follow them all the way over there? The wolf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What see, I- from what we understand, <laughs> Dracula and from what the villagers are saying, he right. can himself he turn into wolf. a wolf. That wolf was his wife. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh shit, that's why I got out of the coffin. Yeah. <laughs> but back at the sanitarium, the men are like, I'm pretty sure that was a wolf, but they're a little confused that wolves would be this close to London. 
That's what I was that that's why I asked because they said that and I was like, what? I feel like if what they should have done editing wise is they show him climbing out of the box and then the wolf howls. Yeah. All right, yeah, you know what I mean. Right. Versus the other way around, because now it just looks like Dracula also heard the wolf. Yeah. He's like, "Oh, that's my alarm clock." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Dracula lives on the moors. I yeah. guess. <laughs> Stay clear of the moors. This is London. It is. But Martin weighs in, saying that he hears them howl at night all the time, and that Rinfield thinks that they're talking to him and even howls back. He's like, he's crazy. (laughs) Van Helsing pulls a book from his jacket and says Renfield knows why the wolves howl and how to make them stop. He forces a plant at Renfield who freaks out and says that Van Helsing knows too much to live. (laughs) I I don't like that. No, (laughs) that's the only problem we have with Renfield. (laughs) But it made me laugh because Seward's like, come on now. Let's let's keep it. Keep keep it civil. But (laughs) Seward urges Martin to take Renfield back to his room. And Martin's like, let's go, fly eater. Yeah. (laughs) Bake him away, (laughs) Julian. It's kind of uh, bullying, really. No, I was going to say, he just bullies him. That's a whole relationship. Martin is kind of the comic relief. Yeah, he is. There's a moment later that I'm like, this is. (laughs) And he doesn't eat flies anymore. He has graduated to spiders. So update your insults. Get some new material. But we learn that the plant Van Helsing zonked Renfield out with is actually Wolfsbane, which is used to protect people against vampires. It's kind of a misnomer. Yeah, it should be Vamp Bane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where did the garlic come from? That's a great question, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Because as soon as I seen this, I was like, all right, I get it's still like a, a plant or an herb or whatever, mm-hmm. but that's not garlic, like at all. I was feel it- like one of the coolest things that true blood ever did was they dispelled the vampire myths as myths started by vampires all right so that they could do shit exactly but they they had no effect on them yeah right but that is not what we're seeing here (laughs) but garlic is delicious exactly we had a question on talk mortem last month yeah about whether we could be vampires or werewolves and honestly garlic might be the deal breaker i was gonna say if i definitely can't eat garlic i didn't think about that that (laughs) is a very easy answer Werewolf. I'm a big yeah. fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Van Helsing requests that they watch Rinfield very closely day and night, but especially night. In Rinfield's room, a wolf howls outside his window, stirring him out of bed. But when he looks out the window, we see Dracula in the night, standing cloaked by a tree. He peers malevolently at Rinfield, who at first is overjoyed to see his master, <laughs> but then begs Dracula not to make him do what he's telepathically ordering him to do. Not her, he says, but Dracula doesn't budge and Renfield sobs, clinching the bars of his window. He's going through it, man. The pimp stare or whatever (laughs) he's got going on. I was like, dude, no words. No, just not not necessary. And this is the worst. What is it? A sanitarium? Yeah. This is the worst. (laughs) Like... I like that he clearly is escaping all the time and doing whatever he wants and dressing like he's not a patient so he can, you know, slip in and out like a demon's whisper. (laughs) And just now they're like, we should really start watching him. He's screaming half of a conversation out of his window and they're just like, well, anyway. It's just, what the fuck? Yeah. Easiest job ever. Yes. Do nothing. Or hurl some insults. Or or harass the the fucking patient. But in the next scene, we see Mina fast asleep in bed, cut to a bat hovering excitedly outside her window. We then see Dracula standing in her doorway, and he creeps over to her bed before he descends upon her to feed. Now, there is very odd editing here. Mm -hmm. He's hovering outside her window and then just decides to make use of her bedroom door. I thought... (laughs) Yeah. Like... (laughs) I was very confused by this, and I was like, well, what? where is the reused shot? Is, this, is it the window? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Turns out it's an editing mistake that I'll explain later. Uh-huh. But the next morning, Mina tells Harker that she went to bed to read, then remembers hearing the sound of a strange dog howling, but then describes a dream that she had where her room was filled with mist, but through the mist, she saw two red eyes peering at her. Now, it was not the Mothman. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Unfortunately. But she then saw a pale white face come out of the mist and felt his hot breath, then his lips, not sexual. Yeah. Sure, Jan. (laughs) See, again, this is what I'm saying. This is quite sexual. They're starting to end. I'm like, is anyone else horny? (laughs) Like, what's going on? Mina is. Shit. Drac. 
Can I call you Drax? <laughs> <laughs> she she remembered, guy. You yeah. know what I mean? You weren't that sneaky. No. Dude, but, that's true. Why yeah, aren't you hypnotizing what these the people? Fuck? But, okay. So, did he do the same thing to her that he did to Renfield? <sighs> To where uh, she's I fine. Guess. He didn't drain her like Lucy. Yeah. He didn't drain her, but she's not calling him master. I'm, he, I'm just. Uh, he has three like, different well, bites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I went too far yeah. with yeah. the field. He, he's fine tuning. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, I don't know how. He's like, the wives are perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck did I do? <laughs> but Seward and Van Helsing join them downstairs as Harker tells her it was just a dream. Mina says that she felt weak in the morning as if all the life had been drained out of her. Harker just urges her to forget about the dream, but Van Helsing takes over, asking her what could have inspired the dream. He asks specifically about the face in the dream and asks where the lips touched her. I'm going to need to see both your hands. (laughs) Van Helsing. (laughs) Mr. Van Helsing, good Lord. Can you tell the part about the lips again? (laughs) I love that it, she's like I I woke up so weak I barely had energy to put the scarf on. Yeah, it's like, girl, we, yeah. we see that scarf. That's true. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Those are not easy to tie. Yeah. <laughs> but she grabs her throat, which is covered in that scarf, and Van Helsing unwraps it to reveal two small marks that we do not see as the viewer. No, we never see them, right? No. no. <laughs> he starts unwrapping it, and she's like, "No," and he's like. No, just let yeah. me. Like, <laughs> well, so, uh, so again, was that the first like uh, the zombie bit me? But I'm gonna hide it from the no, rest. No, I the, mean, you know, yeah. did you get bit? No, no, no. no, no. no. I just like scarves. Everything's yeah. pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the sight of the marks, Harker freaks out. Minna though says that she's had the marks since the morning after the dream. Still calling it a dream after yeah. saying, yeah. But okay, out of nowhere, Count Dracula just appears. A maid played by Moon Carol announces his arrival. The balls on this dude. Yes. And <laughs> can, can we Just, say he appeared on the staircase? Yeah. yeah. He, didn't, yeah. <laughs> he didn't appear at the door. <laughs> got a, and flourish. He's, yes. yeah, he's, just, <laughs> he's not even trying yeah. anymore. No. He just stopped caring. <laughs> But Mina breathes heavy as Dracula tells her father it's nice to see him again. He then turns his attention to Mina, complimenting her, but Van Helsing cuts that shit short, telling Seward that Mina should go to her room at once. I feel like Mina is still <laughs> into him. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> like, she lo- She's like, did like, you hear the part about the lips? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she looks scared when he when he's talking to her dad but then he looks at her yeah. and she's like oh oh, right. yeah. oh that's right <laughs> i forgot i'm like super <laughs> yeah. into you dude she's like lucy's not around anymore yeah. <laughs> i mean granted she is fucking harker's fiance by yeah, the way he's boring yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. even she was like no i like boring guys yeah <laughs> she did <laughs> but mina says that the dream isn't as important as van helsing seems to think it is and just stays seated that is hilarious because she was full on having a panic yeah, attack about was. this dream. And then Dracula shows up and she's like, no, nah, man, what, yeah. why are you making such a big it's deal cool. about this? You need to chill. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my scarf. Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Seward introduces Van Helsing to Dracula. But Dracula is already well aware of who he is and what he does. Mina tells Dracula about her nightmare. And he says that he hopes that his stories don't have anything to do with the nightmare. We learn that apparently he's been telling her grim tales from Transylvania. And again, I'm sorry. When did this happen? Yeah, I, I was like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen them in a room no. together outside of the opera. I mean, I, I, unless that's what they're talking about is he was just like, man, Transylvania is fucked up. Yeah. From the war. That's really all he said. Hey, well, it is the 30s. Maybe nightmares were a lot easier to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to cause. But Harker seems annoyed by this. But the real intriguing development is when Van Helsing looks into a small mirror on the lid of what appears to be a cigar box. (laughs) In it, he discovers Dracula casts no reflection. Seward, unaware of this, approaches Mina and tells her that she should take Van Helsing's advice and head to her room. She does so, and Dracula asks if he can call later to see how she's feeling. The fucking nerve. Yes, yes. The nerve of He's this dude. right there, dude. I do want to point like, out. Right, right there. The, the second that he says this, Harker like launches forward like he's about to kick Dracula's ass, but Van Helsing draws his attention to the mirror. Okay, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about, besides hmm. Dracula having the biggest balls on the fucking planet. <laughs> There, I know I say this a lot, but I would throw up if I looked in that mirror and everyone <laughs> yeah. else around him is yes. there, but he's not. Yeah. And Dude. then 
I feel like Van Helsing's like, dude, look at this shit. Uh-huh. And like nobody's really reacting to no. it. Yeah. See this? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It could it's plain as day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it was bad enough. Look, if it's just Mina and Dracula and you don't see Dracula, like well, maybe the angle's weird. Yeah. Right. But no, when Seward joins yeah. the fray yes. and still Dracula's like still talking. <laughs> I don't know, man. But Mina heads upstairs and Dracula apologizes to the men for the timing of the visit. Van Helsing's like, well, actually, you might could help me out with something. An affable Dracula rejoins him in the room <laughs> and Van Helsing closes and picks up the cigar case. I'm trying to be slick. <laughs> yeah. Van Helsing says that he stumbled upon an amazing phenomenon. So amazing, in fact, that he mistrusts his own judgment. He begins to open the case, telling Dracula to look inside. But once Dracula is wise to what's going on, he smacks the case out of Van Helsing's hand and stares at him furiously. <laughs> This was probably my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> it's like, if you don't get that bullshit yeah. out of my face. <laughs> There's no point in even trying to deny it. No. Like, he's just like, God damn it. <laughs> Are you caught? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're caught. <laughs> and the feeding. Yeah. <laughs> but Dracula calms himself as Van Helsing begins to put the pieces together. Dracula apologizes to Harker and Seward for his behavior, who do appear frightened. Yeah. He says that he just doesn't like mirrors and that Van Helsing can explain. Yeah. Again, <laughs> balls. I, I laughed because, first of all, I know he's not, but it sounded like he was calling Van Helsing ugly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he fucking you know, knows what that's like. You know what it's like to hate a mirror, Van Helsing. But why would he put it on Van Helsing to explain? Because he's flat out like, I don't he, like mirrors. Ask Van Helsing. He knows that I'm yeah, a vampire. He obviously I, knows. But yeah. why are you letting it slip? He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's already he found it. Care. He's like, I'll yeah. turn into a fucking bat right now. I don't understand why he's showing his ass. Yeah. No. There's no point in denying it anymore. I yeah. guess not. But before he bails, he says, Van Helsing for a man who has not lived a single lifetime is very wise and then he makes his exit what an exit yes um this scene <laughs> is a lot it's a whole lot like there's quite a bit here to unpack. Yeah. yes after Dracula leaves though they talk shit they're like what the fuck was that yeah. <laughs> he looked like a madman Harker then steps out to see if Dracula is truly gone, but on the lawn, he says that he sees a wolf running across the lawn. <laughs> what Stop are you it. doing, dude? Okay. No. <laughs> First of all, John's pants were hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> That's step one. Step two, the fact that he slowly walked out of the room and when he was out of sight, turned into a wolf. <laughs> fucking wolf and ran away can i ask why <laughs> yeah no why shit. i don't know but that just struck me as the best thing <laughs> didn't ever. even get off the property no, no. <laughs> he's on their lawn yeah. <laughs> he was like they're probably coming after me yeah. i need to get the <laughs> fuck get out, out of here. here van helsing has a theory though he says dracula was afraid they'd follow him so he hightailed it out of here as a wolf <laughs> He says vampires take the shape of bats more often, but werewolves sometimes, and they also cast no reflection in mirrors. I feel like a bat would be faster. Yeah, well, yeah. you can get out of sight yeah. quicker. A wolf, you gotta... <laughs> you're just, yeah, you're it. Still... <laughs> just being dramatic. <laughs> but Van Helsing puts it simply. He's like, Dracula is a vampire. <laughs> Harker shrugs it off, saying that that sounds like something out of the mouths of one of Seward's patients. And Van Helsing is like, and yeah, that's the genius of it. The greatest strength of the vampire is that people don't believe in them. You saw the mirror. John. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why he has John, any doubt. You saw the mirror. Yeah. And where did that wolf come from? Yeah. No <laughs> shit. I'm, I'm like, fucking sick of this yeah. dude. I see why Mina is trying to get it on with yeah. the track. Yeah. Speaking of which, though, we then see Mina exiting the Seward house to meet Dracula outside. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I, he beckons her with his cape. Now... <laughs> I do want to point out he was just a wolf. Yes. And now he's back on the property. <laughs> he came back around. As himself. <laughs> it's madness. Yeah. It's pure madness. Just Mr. Take Your Girl. He's yeah, just, come here. <laughs> it's like, oh, one yeah. more thing. Like, you just left. Yes. Dude. What are you doing? <laughs> what did you circle no, the block? He, Let her get ready. I'm going to pick you up outside. They're in there <laughs> talking about you right yeah. now. Right now, dude. <laughs> You've been discovered. <laughs> oh, my God. But back inside, Harker is still having trouble with the idea of vampires existing. Van Helsing then explains what vampires are. 
beings who were once alive, but now that they're dead, must feast on the blood of the living to continue to exist. While they're active from sunset to sunrise, they must rest during the day in the earth they were buried in. Seward says Dracula can't very well return to Transylvania to do that, so Van Helsing posits that he must have brought boxes of Transylvanian dirt with him, boxes of native soil large enough for him to sleep in. So that was another interesting thing to me um, about the soil. Yeah. Because vampires, as we know now, as long as you have a coffin, yeah. you're fine to sleep wherever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he had to put dirt from home in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that he was good. I feel like that's a more intriguing thing. Right. Because it ties it closer to the like physical death. Yeah, to the area. Yeah. I think that's pretty neat. It is. I just really wish that he still... I mean, I know that you have to sleep that way, but he could have fixed up the rest of the house (laughs) when we see his house (laughs) it's a dude harker said that place needs work yeah he was like like, i'm not i'm not going to do that (laughs) yeah i've already got my box (laughs) there but their conversation is disturbed by the deranged laughter of an escaped rinfield who enters the room who's watching him (laughs) yeah no shit Seward, instead of being surprised to see him, is like, how much of that did you hear? (laughs) I was like, this dude again? Like, what the fuck? (laughs) Renfield. This is the worst fucking, (laughs) the most unprofessional shit I've ever seen. I can't, I just can't even begin to comprehend it. Renfield, though, says that he's heard enough and that listening to Van Helsing is their only hope. He then approaches Harker and says, it's her only hope. He reminds Seward that he begged him to send him away, but now it's too late. It's happened again. He tells Harker to take Mina away before, but this is when we hear the screeching of a bat. Yeah. <laughs> it floats outside where Dracula made his exit. Rinfield backs away in fear, promising his master that he wasn't going to say anything and that he's loyal to him. What is Dracula doing? Yeah. Dracula's like, bitch, I can <laughs> I, hear yeah. you. <laughs> And the fact that you're a wolf and then you're a man and now you're a bat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, these are all my forms. Yeah. <laughs> you should be listening to Van Helsing. But it's funny because the squeaks are like him talking shit to Rinfield. Yeah. He's like, shut your fucking yeah. mouth. Harker shoots the bat away and Van Helsing asks what Rinfield has to do with Dracula. Rinfield is frightened by the name alone, but then lies and says that he's never heard the name Dracula in his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know. Like, yeah. Uh, But Van Helsing tells him that he'll die in torment with innocent blood on his hands unless he fesses up. Rinfield says God will forgive him as he knows evil is a powerful force on those with weak minds. Just then, the maid runs in, screaming for Harker to come quick. She shouts to Seward and Van Helsing that she's found Mina dead on their front lawn. He tried to warn y'all. He did. I mean, Renfield did. Van Helsing did. So no one's watching Renfield. No No. one's watching Mina. (laughs) All the men leave, but Renfield stays behind laughing. He stares into the eyes of the maid, who faints dramatically. He then crawls over to her, reaching for her throat, and we fade to black. Renfield, no! No! He said he was was off humans. I do want to point out, I read somewhere that there was a cut shot in this sequence Uh where a fly landed on the maid's throat. And that's uh, what he was reaching for. Right. Because we do <laughs> yeah. we do see the maid later and she's not chomped or anything. Right. Yeah, it's all so confusing. Yeah. That's why I know that they can't show him doing whatever, but you should have shown him doing something. something yeah. Instead of, I don't know, man. Or at least just the shot of the fly. Yeah. yeah. Why so did you cut like, it? it's like, oh, it's just Rinfield yeah. being Rinfield. We I, know he likes yeah, his bugs. Yeah. I guarantee the bug shot was not like 10 minutes long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so leave it in. And this movie is, what, 75 minutes? Yeah, so come on. We, you could afford it. Yeah. But we cut to Harker carrying Mina back into the house, saying that she's actually still alive. Van Helsing says it's not actually as pizza as he thinks because she's under the influence of Dracula. They pass a tree on their way back, and once they pass, out slinks Dracula, who watches them go back inside. <laughs> Later on, a policeman rides past a large gate, but stops when he hears a child crying. Through the trees, we get a shot of Lucy walking through the night, appearing in a trance. Now Lucy's back yeah. in the picture? I Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <Why not>? <laughs> <laughs> Very temporarily. Yeah. This was a big dropped plot point for me because I don't think we see Lucy again. Yeah. No, and what she's doing. Yes. I'm like, wait, what? That's what we learn right now. Yeah. yeah. Back at the sanitarium, Martin reads from the paper about recent attacks on small children after dark by a, quote, mysterious woman in white. 
Two girls say a woman offered them chocolates, lured them to a secluded spot, and then proceeded to bite their throats. He said, bit them slightly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. She only put one tooth yeah. Exactly. It like, it, just hilarious. She's going to end up with a couple of Renfields. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> But nurses around Martin ask if it's a ghost, but Martin corrects them. It's a vampire. Back at the Seward's home, Van Helsing asks Mina about the woman in white, but Harker says that she'd have no way of knowing anything. The camera presses in as Van Helsing asks the last time Mina saw Lucy after she'd been buried. I didn't know that she had seen her at all since she had been buried. No, dude. No. (laughs) After he asks this, though, Harker throws his newspaper to the ground like, God damn it! (laughs) It's fucking pissed. But Mina says that she was outside on the terrace and Lucy stepped out of the shadows looking at her. She tried to speak to her, but remember that Lucy was dead. Then suddenly, Lucy appeared like a starving animal, a wolf. <laughs> I like that she had to remember that Lucy yeah. was dead. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Weren't they My s- best friend. I was yeah. like, they were spending the night together. <laughs> yeah, they were. But apparently Lucy then ran away into the dark. With that, Mina confirms that the woman in white is Lucy, and Van Helsing promises that after tonight, Lucy will be allowed to rest, her soul released from this horror. Mina asks Van Helsing to promise to save her soul as well, and Harker tells her that she's not going to die, and he clings to her arm. Mina tells him not to touch her or kiss her ever again, and asks Van Helsing to make him understand, but he just leaves. He said, my name's Paul, and this shit's between (laughs) y'all. I'm not going to do your breakup for you. (laughs) Mina tells Harker that it's all over. Their love, their life together. She loves him, but the power of Dracula wills this horror upon her. Van Helsing tells her that she must come inside, and Harker is furious. Mina has really come to terms with her situation very quickly. It's honestly commendable. (laughs) She's adaptable. This is my life now, so... (laughs) But Harker tells Van Helsing that he's making Mina crazy with his ideas. But Van Helsing's like, what you need to be worried about is the setting sun, man. He yeah. say, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Harker has had enough and tells Seward that he's taking Mina to London. And if he doesn't let him, he's calling the police. John, shut the fuck yeah, up, I know. Dude. I, at this point, I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, my he's God. He's just annoying at this <laughs> point. <laughs> I'm confused. I'm trying to remember what role he played in the novel because I don't remember being annoyed as fuck at him. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> but this is when Van Helsing takes control, saying that he must be the master here or he can do nothing, which is kind of an odd thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> but Seward agrees. And Van Helsing says that he's prepared Mina's room with Wolf's Bane, so she'll be safe if Dracula does return. Harker's like, oh, you bet your sweet ass she'll be safe because she's coming with me to London. Okay, dude. It felt almost like a (laughs) Rose the Keys moment. (laughs) (laughs) He bails, though, saying that he'll be waiting for her in the library, and Mina begs her father to go talk to Harker. Van Helsing calls in Nurse Briggs, played by Joan Standing. So there's a mix-up on credits here at the opening. They say that the maid is played by Joan Standing, but she's not. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Did nobody check? I don't know no. what happened. people responsible for watching Renfield checked. <laughs> <the Check>. <laughs> like, no, we got it. Like, remember Prezient? It's like, yeah, exactly. Carl Limley? Yeah. But Van Helsing tells her to place a wreath of wolf's bane on Mina as she sleeps and to make sure that she doesn't take off and to also ensure that the windows stay closed all night. At Dracula's castle, we see a box begin to open and we pan away to the window as we hear a wolf howling. We pan back to see Dracula emerge, ready for the night. At this point, I realize we never really see Dracula get out of his coffin. Yeah. They're always like, what's <laughs> going on? Over- oh, my God, it's Dracula. He's out. <laughs> and I don't know if Bela Lugosi was like, I'm not going in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but back at the Seward's place, Van Helsing recounts the events. They all saw that Dracula had no reflection in the mirror. And when you take into account the three boxes of dirt that were delivered to Carfax Abbey... There is really no doubt that Dracula is a vampire. No, there's not. Yeah. And you know, remember when you saw that wolf and that bat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's lost on Harker because he's just like, dude, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to let me take me into the London or no? No, dude. Van Helsing says that if she goes with him, she will die. Seward asks Harker to be patient and that Mina is his daughter and he'll do what he thinks is best. Van Helsing sits Harker down and calmly explains... He's devoted his entire life to this field of study, learning things that the world is better off not knowing. Their only chance of saving Mina is to find Dracula's resting place and drive a stake through his heart. We then see Renfield's shadow enter the frame. (laughs) Shortly after, he interrupts. 
He's basically like, hmm, strange conversation for two men to be having who aren't crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I love Renfield. <laughs> <laughs> and I was getting withdrawals because it's been a little bit since yeah. we last saw him. But again, <laughs> it's, it's been like five minutes, I think. <laughs> Too long. Again, though, he's just wandering yeah. around as he pleases. To no consequence. Yeah. Nobody's... They're just like, God, da- he's here yeah. again. Like, he doesn't they get in do. trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Seward threatens to put him in a straitjacket, which he's not going to do. It's an empty threat. It's an idle threat. But Renfield threatens back, saying that he basically has super strength because he's insane. I don't know what he means by that. (laughs) But Seward calls Martin to tell him that Renfield is loose again, so hopefully Martin is coming to do his job. (laughs) Renfield approaches Seward, telling him Dracula stood beneath his window in the moonlight, promising him things and making them happen. He said a red mist appeared over the lawn, then Dracula parted it, and Renfield could see thousands of rats with red eyes. He said that Dracula told him he would make him rich with rats if he obeyed him. <laughs> Is he fucking Charlie yeah, from yeah, the yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Is he, are King he, of the rats. Yeah. King of the rats. But we then see Dracula appear on the terrace, shrouded in fog. He's like, again, running your fucking yeah. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> You cannot leave Renfield alone for two minutes. He's going to tell all your business. Seward asks what Renfield was meant to do, and Renfield says, what's already been done. Martin appears, saying that Renfield's iron bars have been twisted as if they was cheese. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This apparently somehow alerts Van Helsing to the fact that Dracula is here. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if does this mean that I know he's been escaping freely every, (laughs) every night he's been locked up, but does this mean that Dracula let him out this time? Yeah. Sure. Uh, but why would Dracula letting, let I don't him know, out dude. I don't I don't know. To spill the tea <laughs> yeah. to everyone. Well, I'm just I'm a little conflicted because he has like pledged his allegiance to Dracula. Right. Yes. But any time he has the opportunity <laughs> to give people information to use against mm. Dracula, he's singing like a fucking canary. Yeah. It's it's very weird. He's a complicated cat. He is. And that's why I love yeah. him. <laughs> See, he should have used both fangs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where he fucked up. No half measures. Mm-mm. Mike Airman Trout. <laughs> But Harker rushes out, and Van Helsing tells Seward that Dracula can do no harm because they're ready for him this time. Martin rushes Renfield out with Seward, and Van Helsing follows close behind. Before he can leave, though, and join them, Dracula appears behind him, telling him that with everything he's learned, perhaps it would be wise to return to his home country. (laughs) Now, that's a threat. Yeah. (laughs) I love that he denies nothing. Yeah. (laughs) Van Helsing declines that offer, though, saying that he'd rather stay and protect Mina. Dracula informs him that it's too late. His blood flows through her veins, and she will live through centuries as he has. Van Helsing says they know how to save Mina, and that he will tear Carfax Abbey to the ground to find Dracula's resting place to drive a stake through his heart. Dracula, obviously not a fan of this idea, (laughs) simply tells Van Helsing to come here. I thought that was... A lot. <laughs> yeah. Like, let me talk. Let me talk to you. Yeah. Like, just, just a second. Van Helsing does not budge, but Dracula makes his hand like a claw, asking again, "Come here." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Van Helsing appears hypnotized. Yeah. For a moment. For for a brief moment. Yeah. He steps a little closer, but then breaks away. His will too strong for that mind control bullshit. Oh, well, I he's not attracted to Dracula. No, so. no. Not, if he had heard more about the lips, maybe. Yeah. Maybe because I feel like everybody else is like, <laughs> I was gonna say dickmatized. <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna. You did. I, I, yeah. said, I said dickmatized. Yes, you did. But everybody is like. I mean, he looks at them and they're like, "Oh shit, yes, sir. Yeah. You, yeah. Got it, boss. You, got, you got it, boss." You got it, boss. But the thing is, is that that's so interesting is that this, again, no music. No. And I, I did wonder how it would sound with music. And this was the scene that I watched on YouTube. And you didn't yeah. care for it? I didn't. There was The music was too busy. Right. And it took away from the moment and Bela Lugosi fucking owning the shit out of this scene. <laughs> yeah. it, it was a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> but it, I thought the first was enough. But the second time he was like, come here. I was yeah. like, oh, fuck. <laughs> But Van Helsing reaches into his coat, which Dracula assumes is for more Wolfsbane. Van Helsing's like, not quite, and whips out a crucifix. Dracula goes running for the hills with a hiss. He doesn't like those. I like the hiss, yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Harker goes to check on Mina, but overhears her arguing with Nurse Briggs. She complains about the stench of the wolf's bane and how she wants the window open, which goes against Van Helsing's orders. Briggs leaves the room and bumps into Harker, telling him that she was feeling dizzy earlier, but then when it cleared, she saw Mina dressed and on the terrace. (laughs) I guess this is, I don't know if that's right now or earlier, but... I don't know. It's whatever. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Harker offers to talk to Mina, but she just rounds the corner, happy to be out of the room. Harker takes notice of her, saying that she looks wonderful, and Mina says that she's never felt better. John is stupid as shit. Yeah, oh, it's it's awful. Yeah. Briggs says that he needs to get Mina back inside, but they just dismiss her with the quickness. Again, disobeying. Yeah. But on the terrace, Mina draws Harker's attention to the stars, and as he stares up at them, she's transfixed on his throat. Yeah. She's like, John, I never <laughs> noticed how lovely your neck yeah. is. <laughs> he catches her, but she tells him it's nothing, inviting him to sit with her. Yeah, that lady's going to kill you, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. And you deserve it. Yeah. I, th- oh, yeah. I thought Renfield was fucking <laughs> up no, earlier. This, yeah, this no. is beyond. <laughs> no. Downstairs, Vin Helsing snags Seward, telling him that Mina is about to get real vampy real soon, <laughs> and they don't have a moment to spare. On the terrace, Mina tells Harker how much she loves the night, but Harker calls her out, saying that just last night she was fucking terrified of it. Yeah. She's like, people change. Yeah. <laughs> uh, peop- a man grows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this is when a bat suddenly flies into frame. (laughs) Harker tries to swat it away, but it squeaks at Mina, who responds to it. It squeaks one last command, and Mina goes, I will. Yeah. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) Harker's like, what was that? And she's like, I didn't say anything. Yeah. It's it's the gaslighting for me. And she was... clearly talking to that bat yes yeah. there is no excuse two, it was a two-sided conversation yeah. Yeah. he was squeaking she'd be like mm-hmm. <laughs> she was active listening yeah somehow he's satisfied with this and sits back down with her van helsing and seward watch from the window as mina asks harker for a favor he's gotta get that crucifix away from van helsing and hide it she doesn't even really give a reason though. yeah <laughs> After Harker responds confused, she stares hungrily at him as the camera presses in, and we watch as she slowly descends upon his throat. Yeah, can uh, for one second, okay, because this is—it's about to get real. But yeah. <laughs> if we can just <laughs> unpack for a moment that Dracula went toe to toe with Van Helsing. Yes, he right. did. Tried to hypnotize him, didn't work. Van Helsing's like, "Gotcha, bitch!" With the crucifix, yeah. Dracula hisses and runs away. Goes to Mina, <laughs> <laughs> dude, and is like, "Get that fucking yeah. thing!" From him. <laughs> and Mina's like, "Listen, John, like that yeah. that sequence of events no. is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it's it's a ridiculous, it's incredible situation here." But before Mina can get a good bite, Van Helsing rushes in, brandishing that crucifix, and Mina shields her eyes. They waited to save John until the literal yeah. last minute. Like, well, let's see what she does. Yeah. <laughs> Harker begins to tussle with Van Helsing, wrenching the cross away from him. He then goes to check on Mina with the cross in his hand, but she tells him that after what's happened to her, she can't bear to look at it. How did John not see anything wrong with what was going yeah. on? And Van Helsing yeah. trying to save him, he's like, Back off, man! Yeah, like he, yeah. dude, they like struggles. <laughs> yeah, he does. Stupidest human being on the planet. After breaking into sobs, Mina finally confesses that Van Helsing is telling the truth. Dracula came to her one night, opened a vein in his arm, and made her drink. Uh. Okay, hold on though. Hmm. Oh, but we no, she did have the puncture wound in her neck. Yeah. He's like, now give me some of that. Back. Yeah. So- <laughs> Well, yeah, no. So what but, the fuck? Well, typically, like the way I've seen it in like vampire lore is they get theirs and then they're like, "Here, have some of mine to replenish." It's oh, called it's called okay. communion. Exa- okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that checks out. <laughs> but just then, we hear a gunshot. We see that Martin is outside with the maid firing at the bat. Van Helsing tells him it's no use and that the bullets will have no effect on it. Then, in an odd bit of 1930s comedy, Martin says that they're all crazy except for him and the maid. And he has his doubts about the maid. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just backs away and we fade to black. <laughs> no, it's not. The no, it's yeah. not. This is the most tense moment in the film, one would think. <laughs> it was very out of place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But we fade back in on a ticking clock in Mina's room. 
As she sleeps, she removes the wolf's bane from her neck. Dracula stands outside her window, making eye contact with Nurse Briggs, who under his spell opens the terrace door for him to enter. They keep saying for people to watch Renfield or Mina or whatever, but they really don't account for the fact that he takes people over. Yeah. Yeah. Or he can convince people without even opening his mouth right. or touching them or anything like that. So And Van Helsing knows this. Yeah. yeah. It's because so, it's he was very, just yeah. hypnotized for a second. <laughs> I just, I can't. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but in a wide shot, we see Dracula lean down, reaching at Mina, still asleep in her bed. Now, according to a video I watched from Cinemassacre. Right. The shot of Mina getting chomped earlier mm-hmm. was meant to be a part of this sequence. All right. That would make more sense. And I don't understand how they made this editing mistake, mm-hmm. but way earlier in the film, as we said, right. when she does get chomped, you see the wolf's bane on her pillow. Yeah. Oh, man. And she wasn't supposed to have that yet. Uh, <laughs> well, but if, if yeah, he had bled himself for her, right. mm-hmm. that's all that happened that night. And later, yeah, now, I, yeah, wow. And according to that source, we weren't supposed to see that night. That night was just supposed to have happened. Ah, uh, because right. that's not confusing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but the other thing is that when we see him enter his room to chomp on Mina, his cape is raised as if he's shielding himself from the wolf's bane. Yeah. You're right. So I thought make, he was just being dramatic. Ex- no, <laughs> <laughs> it would make sense for that to happen right now. Right. And then the nurse takes it. Because we see a shadow leave the room and his eyes are on a shadow leaving the room Yeah. in that previous scene. But it would make sense now because that's the nurse taking the wolf's bane and leaving. And we know that. Exactly. Wow. And she wasn't <laughs> Mina's nurse yet. So that wouldn't have even. It's yeah. a whole thing. That's a lot. It's just a weird editing mistake. We just accept it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to sleep with flowers. I mean, it's who fine. doesn't? We all do it. <laughs> But Van Helsing and Harker arrive at Carfax Abbey and notice that Rinfield is there as well. (laughs) Beneath the Abbey, Dracula leads Mina to his crypt through a loud creaking door. Rinfield, using another path, is down there already, super stoked to be reunited with his master. Outside, Van Helsing and Harker follow Rinfield's step to a window that allows them to see Dracula and Mina descending a large staircase. Mm -hmm. We also see Rinfield running up the staircase to meet them. Harker calls out to her and Renfield's like, oh shit, dude, I did not leave them here. (laughs) I promise. (laughs) Damn it, Renfield. Dracula has had enough. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He shouts at Renfield to stop talking, but Renfield continues pleading his case, swearing his loyalty and begging for his life. For his efforts, Dracula creeps down the steps and grabs him by the throat. I'm sad. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Harker and Van Helsing break in, watching as Renfield's corpse tumbles down the stairs. For a long time. For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and the way it just falls to the side. He yeah. Doesn't even- <laughs> he doesn't even complete the staircase. It falls right into the stair hole. But <laughs> <laughs> they see Dracula carrying Mina into a side hatch and rush after him. <laughs> that looked so funny. <laughs> <laughs> he closes the door behind them, rushing off into the catacombs. The men are able to get through the door with ease. It literally takes like five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they hear Mina scream and call out to her. Van Helsing remarks that the sun is about to rise and the men find two rudimentary box-like coffins. Van Helsing opens one to find a sleeping Dracula. Personally, I would kill to be able to fall asleep this quick. Dude, yeah. he was fucking he out. He was dude. out and looks like he's been out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Van Helsing asks Harker to get him a piece of stone to drive a stake through their hearts. Harker hesitates for a moment, but he does as he's told. Van Helsing fashions a stake out of a plank from the lid of Dracula's coffin. He goes to open the second coffin, but finds that Mina is not there, which gives Harker hope that she's still alive. As he searches for her, Van Helsing kneels down, wasting no time, and drives the stake into Dracula's heart. He screams and groans in pain, and we watch as Mina kind of just stands in the corner... I don't want to say grooving on it a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> it looked like that was more than it was doing it for yeah. her. Yeah, <laughs> this is how she. This is how she gets her kicks. <laughs> Very. Uh, I was surprised it was that easy. Very kind easy. Of like, yeah. Anticlimactic. Yeah, like Very he's just anticlimactic. Gift wrapped for you. Already. Yeah. He's like, well, gotta go yeah. to bed. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been? I mean, I know that they can't, but they have all that smoke. Why didn't they do a thing with the sunlight? Yeah, they uh, could have. Smoke isn't that hard. Smoke know. isn't that hard. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. 
But Dracula's groans continue, but become weaker and weaker until they cease. I do want to point out that I read that the sounds that Renfield makes as he dies Mm -hmm. and these groans from Dracula were censored in later versions because I guess they thought it was a bit much. What? And that it would either scare audiences too much or something along those lines. I I read that Carl Lemley, when he watched this, got scared and said it was too scary. Stop. Too scary, Carl. Too scary, Carl. Too scary for Carl. And I don't know if that was part of what had gotten cut. Mm -hmm. But apparently there was also a scene where (laughs) Van Helsing takes Harker to the cemetery where Lucy's just, you know, kicking around (laughs) and is like, look, like... (laughs) Uh, for proof or whatever which uh, I don't know when this would fall in because they really had their hands full these yeah. nights but well, maybe on his way to Carfax Abbey it's like oh shit okay. that's Lucy that would <laughs> yeah. the look that right would, there yeah. well that would make sense to why he was willing to get the stone to stake them because he's right, seen right. but yeah he's like points her out and I guess she goes in the mausoleum and he's like I'm gonna take care of this bitch yeah. and obviously you don't see it but it's no. implied that he goes and kills her yeah. but that got cut too I feel like that makes sense because yeah. at least we see what happens with Lucy because right, right. Lucy, it's like she's dead oh wait no she's not and then we never yeah. hear yeah. from her again there's really no point to bring her back if you're not gonna no she's just kind of like a ghost uh, yeah. yeah she's like a an urban legend yeah, almost, yeah. but like also a vampire yeah. so i don't i don't know the woman in white the woman yeah. in white it's just it was strange and so i wonder what else got cut out because i read that todd browning was not happy about it yeah i saw that he thought that the best bits were left out in the yeah film. I'm like, is this the first case of Studio Meddling? Oh, shit. Is this... <laughs> fucking Book of Shadows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Mina screams and Harker runs to her, discovering that she's no longer under Dracula's spell. She says that she tried to call out, but she couldn't. She tells him that the sun stopped Dracula and that they should have seen the look on his face. I would have liked to have seen the look on his yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Van Helsing tells her that there's nothing to fear as Dracula is now dead and forever will be. He tells them to leave and that he'll join them shortly. We then watch as Harker and Mina ascend the staircase to the sound of morning bells ringing. This is where the film ends. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why he didn't go with them, Van Helsing. Me neither. I was I was hoping that he would come behind them carrying Winfield. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's wait, he's alive. Well, he, I mean, I was hoping. Like, I'm not done here. Yeah. You can go very weird like, well, what else do you have right, to do yeah why do you need to be alone to do it yeah i think he's gonna stake him a few more times to be sure <laughs> maybe it's the first case of the villain coming back right. to life yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i i think i mean i guess without renfield the shot is a little more romantic at the end right because you have the two lovers not reunited yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or not renfield uh van helsing yeah. right but um, a little anticlimactic. Yeah. It is. Because it's like, and then they lived happily yeah, ever after. that was it. And I it, just really wanted John to die. Harker. Jesus yeah. Christ, man. He was a fucking idiot. He was pretty pointless. Yeah. yeah. But I do want to point out that there was an original epilogue. I'm listening. It, I think, ran on the first run of the film. Yeah. But it was Edward Van Sloan as Van Helsing appearing in front of a curtain. And he says, and I quote, Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, a word before you go. We hope the memories of Dracula and Renfield won't give you bad dreams, so just a word of assurance. When you get home tonight and the lights have been turned out and you're afraid to look behind the curtains and you dread to see a face appear at the window, why, just pull yourself together and remember that after all, there are such things as vampires. So this epilogue was lost and the reason for it is because it was censored for the release in 1936. Because, Too scary. Yes. They thought <laughs> that they thought that Christian groups would lose their fucking minds if the at the end of the film they're like, everybody calm yeah. down. Vampires are fucking <laughs> real. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> yeah. so they, why are you telling us to calm down? Yeah. I don't know. I think I think that's what gets me. It's like everybody calm yeah, down. But this shit can that happen to you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should be afraid. <laughs> Maybe he lives next door to, to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would have kept it. I actually enjoy it. And they yeah. do kind of reuse it a little bit. I think it it might be Frankenstein where it starts with a uh, curtain and the speech and everything. Right, Marge Simpson. Right. Yeah, Marge Simpson. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's gone from forever because they can't find it. I do want to give credit to Lost Media Wiki mm-hmm. for the text. I think you can find it elsewhere, but that's where All I right. found it. Right. But I have to ask the customary question. What did you guys think of Dracula? 
this having been my first time watching this, mm-hmm. uh, I did enjoy it. It's it's uh, funny when it's not supposed to be funny, <laughs> but it it is it is a good movie. If you've never seen it, watch it because it is kind of like the birth of horror movies, yeah. right? And to see that it's kind of like a B horror movie <laughs> gives me hope. <laughs> um, but it, it it was very uh, like you can tell it was a play. Right. You know what it's, I mean? Yes, very much. Um, but I did enjoy it more than, not than I thought I would, but I, like I said, I went in with the open mind because I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. But I'm really glad that I did enjoy it. Um, it does have problems. I mean, <laughs> but it's 31. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I did. I The one thing I did want to say is that... Um, I know you mentioned Woofula earlier, Mm -hmm. and uh, I did see the video. We watched it on him covering this, and uh, he talked about how different the Spanish version was and the other languages were. And, I mean, he showed some clips of the Spanish version. (laughs) No, it looked good. uh, Yeah, it looked pretty good. I did want to touch on that because concurrently, while filming this English version of Dracula, they filmed it during the day, and at the nighttime, they would film the Spanish version of Dracula. Yeah. And it was the same sets, the same costumes. Yeah. They, again, as Wolfula had said... They had the benefit of looking at the dailies from the English version. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, how can we top this? Yeah. And with the camera movements, yeah. They they did top it technically. Yeah. I think that the thing that it had, the English version had over the Spanish is Bela Lugosi. Well, yeah. Of course. But I would have loved to seen some of that camera work here. <laughs> he said that the dude told him, y- act like him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, he's doing a good job. Yeah. He is. Um, but yeah, like you see him like uh, when dude slaps the box, mm-hmm. the Spanish version dude hits it out of his hand with a cane. Yeah. And it yeah. shatters. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. And the entrance of Dracula at his castle in Transylvania. Yeah. It's this that, massive like, swooping tracking yeah. shot. Here it's just like a static camera. Yeah. Again, I think it's Todd Browning getting in the way of Carl Freund. Yeah. yeah. I wish they would have took a little more chances. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but I did enjoy it. So I can't even say to even the stuff that was bad was good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, OK, this I was like, <laughs> it's what it is. Yeah. But you do. Uh, I, I, I don't want to go too much on, but I told your sister, I said, I'm glad that that these movies are here mm-hmm. to see because you can see the evolution of of horror monsters and where they are. And I don't really feel like we have any now. You know, there's not really like the 80s were like, we're going to fucking perfect this. Mm -hmm. And this is what it is. So now when you talk of movie monsters, you get Chucky and Jason and Michael Myers. And you know what I mean? Yeah. These guys kind of got lost over time. You know what I mean? Now movie monsters are, you know what I mean? Like I said, Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You that's when you see it that's what you think of you know it's kind of upsetting to move away from movie monsters yeah we i you're 100 percent right because it's more about the slasher icons yeah yeah and i mean they will hold and it again it's a matter of standing the test of time mm-hmm. yeah i think a lot of them michael myers for me as an example i think 90 years we'll still be talking about him well yeah oh for sure there are quite a few and i think that it's just kind of like you're saying it's just the evolution yeah but it's an interesting point. Very astute. Yeah. But I liked it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I liked it too. I honestly really had fun watching it and I had even more fun talking about it. Mm-hmm. I think I made it clear how much I love Renfield. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was a blast to watch. And yeah. I feel like it's easy to overlook him because Bella Lugosi is right. so incredible in this. Mm-hmm. But man, I really just want to tip my hat to him because he yeah. was fucking. <laughs> Very entertaining for me. Um, it's a f- it's a really fun time. Mm-hmm. There are some issues with the plot, <laughs> yeah. and the pacing, and maybe. And I talk a lot about, you know, stop treating your audience like they're stupid. Don't spoon feed your audience. Right. But I was like, now who's that bitch? Yeah. Like I, I was confused <laughs> a few times. Right, I could use but, the help. Yeah, right. well, I mean, that was just a little. Yeah, yeah actually. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
But yeah, no, I had, I thought that we would have fun with this one, but I really had a blast yeah. talking about it. <laughs> I know it was a lot of fun. To be honest, I was a little nervous about covering these films. Yeah, you told mm. me that this morning. I wanted to cover them so bad, but I was very afraid of A, doing them justice, mm-hmm. leading them, and B, the fact that they are so unlike anything we've covered. Yeah. They are. But I, first of all, had a blast. And <laughs> <laughs> I just think that these films are classic for a reason. Right. For sure. They're incredible horror films that really had an immeasurable impact on horror right. as a whole and pop culture in general. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because this informed our idea of a vampire on Absolutely. screen. Absolutely. Right, right. And you still see some of it today. No, it's, yeah. it's permanent. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. yeah. There are issues, definitely. But there's so much, I want to use the word charm. Right. Yeah. There's so much charm to these pictures. I I just can't help but love them. Um, even with, maybe with and because of their flaws. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess that, that can lead us into ratings. Mm-hmm. Positive side, man, Bela Lugosi. Yeah. yeah. He fucking brings it. I think he might have actually turned into a vampire for this role. <laughs> <laughs> there was a rumor from... Lupita Tovar, I believe her name was, she played Mina's counterpart in the Spanish version of Dracula. Mm-hmm. And she said that she heard rumors that Bela Lugosi would sleep in a coffin on set. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't know if that's true, yeah. but I think it's such a great story. And if it <laughs> Let's is... Let's keep it going, though. Yeah, yeah. He's showing how dedicated he is to this yeah. role if he was actually doing that. But the atmosphere, the set design, Dwight Fry as Renfield. <laughs> Please. Carl Freund, whenever he was able to do interesting things with the cinematography, the eyes yeah. of Dracula, iconic. Yeah. And he doesn't blink, right? No. Yeah. I, yeah, I watched I it again and I was looking for I him to blink. I don't think he blinks yeah. once. I don't think he does either. And that's, again, impressive as hell. Those lights in your eyes? Yeah. yeah. Fucking hell, dude. <laughs> like, stop that. Like, please. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got about three seconds. That's it. <laughs> but on the negative side... I don't want to call the direction lackluster. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do think, here's what I think. They filmed English Dracula during the day. Right. Spanish Dracula production watches the tapes, improves on it at night. Right. I think English Dracula should have watched Spanish Dracula's tapes (laughs) (laughs) to improve because I would have loved to seen some of the technical work that they did. I mean, even random effects that they added in that weren't in the English version. Mm -hmm. I will say that I did hear that they did rip off uh, Nosferatu more than the English version because oh. the director of the Spanish film was a massive fan. Wow. But even then, I, I'd like yeah, to see it. Fine. <laughs> but I think the other thing is just the plot structure. Right. Especially act three. Yeah. It's, it's, a, or it's, it's a fucking uh, wild ride. Like, I'm in Australia. I'm in yeah. America. I'm in Australia. I'm in America. I'm like, are you a vampire about a person? What <laughs> Wolf, what? Now I'm prune Tracy. Yeah, I just don't get what they're doing with him. But also the ending is very anticlimactic. Yeah, it is. I would have loved to have seen like more of the final battle. Right, right. And Lucy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please what explain. The fuck? I'm not really <laughs> sure what happened there, but this film, I, I love this film. Right. I think it's amazing. You should watch it. It's very important. Mm-hmm. We say that sometimes on the show, but this one is one of probably the most important right horror films we've ever covered. Mm-hmm. But I got to say, out of ten boxes of Transylvanian dirt. I'm going to give Dracula eight boxes of Transylvanian dirt out of 10. I came here with a 7.5, but the more I think about it, the more we discuss it, I remember the way it made me feel as a kid. Yeah. Right. And I fucking love these pictures and it's an eight for me, but I will now open the floor to you. I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I will say the uh, no music was a, it was a bit of a change. Yeah. Because, um, the the what was it? The John Carpenter music was oh fucking just blowing my <laughs> mind. Yeah, so to go, you know what I mean, to run into this kind of movie, and then it being this old, mm-hmm. I did enjoy it though, and I had a lot of fun talking about it. Like you said, the plot and the cuts is, it was was a bit much. There mm-hmm. was a little too long on some of the stairs for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, the bats were funny. Um, mm-hmm. but they, I mean, again, 31, Yeah. but I did, this movie was, was, was fun. And it, it does, like you said, 
you see where everything started mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you can see how it has stood the test of time. It wasn't garlic, but it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. it's still there, you know, some kind of plant or something. It just changed forms to something else. Uh, he still looks fly. Oh yeah. Every time you see Dracula in anything, uh, he's dressed good. Call um, Ranch. Yeah. He'd be dressing. <laughs> but I, I did enjoy this movie and I'm very, very excited to get into the other ones because I know they're almost as old. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I want to see where it goes from here. You know, what carried over to the next, you know, Universal Monster movie? Mm-hmm. Uh, what did they start? Maybe there's something else in one of those movies that came out too. You know what I mean? And everybody uses it and uses it. Yeah. There, the trope started there. Or yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, now I see. You know <laughs> what I mean? That This evolved from this. And it, it, it is good and interesting to get in here and watch these. For me, on a scale from one to ten boxes of Transylvanian dirt, I'm going to give Dracula a 7.5. I did have fun watching this movie with the holes and everything. Even if that, just watching it to laugh Mm -hmm. and kind of (laughs) like see, you know, like, uh, of course, it's you don't know what you're doing. So you're just going in there and like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do this. Um, And yeah, the Spanish version had... The, you know what I mean? Got to watch and see what was. I just wish they would have done a little more, took yeah. a little more chances, you Agreed. know, because if, if we see in the Spanish version that they take advantage of it on a so, lower budget, yeah, on a yeah. lower budget, and you're using the same equipment, yeah. So that means you could have been like, you want to hear something wacky, guys? <laughs> let's, you know, let's try this shot, yeah. Fuck it, you know what I mean? Why not? Don't just not as safe, you know what I mean? Didn't mm-hmm. play it as safe. Uh, but I did enjoy it. And I, I would recommend if you, like you said, if you haven't seen it, watch it. So you can see, holy shit, this is this is terrifying back in the day. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we are, what, desensitized to oh, how yeah. it is now. Yeah. But back then, that might have been some spooky shit. Yeah. And you it was. I mean? They freaked yeah. the fuck out. I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it, though. No, it was good. I did like yeah, it. Yeah, I kept saying Renfield is the wild card. You're the fucking wild card. <laughs> well, again, though, it, it feels like a bee horror. And if, to, to feel like <laughs> that's, that's the way to yeah, your heart. To, hmm. It's what started it. That's fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like it. No, I agree. Um, I feel like I'd just be repeating you guys if I really dove into <laughs> it. But um, it's funny, T, that you said that you came to the table with the number and bumped it up a point five because yeah. uh-huh. I did the same thing oh, as shit. we were talking. No, well, well, as did you too? Five. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm really glad that we're getting into these. Like I said, I don't. I'm not familiar with them like you are. Mm-hmm. Right. So. At, in 2020, you know, revisiting these, it's a treat. Yeah. And the fact that we still have them to watch. Oh, um, yeah. I feel like we're we're really, really lucky and we should acknowledge that. This is kind of the era of a lot of lost films. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. But we still have this. Yeah, you know? yes, we do. Oh, so yeah. it's like, you know, <laughs> California, here we come. Yeah. Right? That's where we started <laughs> from. It's just really cool to see all these iconic things being born right and um that's just really special right but i came to the table with a number like i said i did bump it up 0.5 because i really had a lot of fun (laughs) yeah and um uh, my biggest issue with the film really is that that back end it kind of (laughs) i don't want to say it falls apart but it kind of does (laughs) and then it's like uh were like ramping up and ramping yeah, up and yeah. they follow him to his castle and then oh he's dead and yeah. they lived happily ever after it's like well, wait what well first he's sleeping first he <laughs> immediately needs to go to bed yes uh, i mean his social bar was probably just yeah. maxed out and i feel that i get it he was beefing with yeah. people all and night how tiring must it be to shift into a bat then do yeah, a bat. Then no he, shit. he was overdoing it he yeah. really was <laughs> But on a scale from one to ten boxes of Transylvanian dirt, I also am giving Dracula seven point five boxes of Transylvanian dirt. <laughs> I came with the seven, but no, I, this was so yeah. fucking fun, dude. <laughs> I think too, in in watching this, I'm glad that we, you know, are are opening this. Like you said, we're taking yeah. the journey into these. 
because I really enjoy history. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to me, also looking at this, this is a history lesson for me. It is. Absolutely. So it's... Uh, it's it's refreshing to go back and see this and look at it that way for me because I'm like, this is history. This shit is old. Mm-hmm. And then this is from the beginning. So this is the start of horror. So now I'm be I, I I'm looking at it, you know what I mean, through that lens. And I'm like, that's why I'm like, I can't sit here and be like, oh, well, the, you know, yeah, the back end was, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like you saw it. Yeah. <laughs> we were all there. But, you're you like i said this is the beginning you're yeah. seeing it yeah. mistakes are gonna be made of course yes. you know what i mean and then there's gonna be others to fix it mm-hmm. and then they're gonna make a mistake then somebody else is gonna fix it from that yeah you watch it and you're like well you know how would you tackle something that's never been yeah. done before yeah. yeah yeah it's unbelievable you yeah. gotta make the mistakes to correct oh them. yeah mm-hmm. hey we did it yeah yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah we did it. <laughs> Well, that's all from us at Pod Mortem. What would you rate Dracula and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the Pod Mortem. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at TravisMWH, at Blood and Smoke, and at RealStreeter84. Please consider pledging to our Patreon and stay tuned until after the music for a special thank you to our Wendigo Getter patrons. And remember, when people attempt to show you the light, don't let your ignorance keep you in the dark. Until next time. Thank you all so much for staying tuned for our special thank you to our Wendigo Getter patrons. Woo! Blah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? That was, there was none of that. Yeah. <laughs> Is that yeah, the actual the, count? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> special thank you to Chris Antaveras, Kristen Lofton, Megan Martinez, Kimberly Bass, Melanie Van Huston, Sophie Hodson, Anthony Jerome M., Jordan Nash, Kent Morton, Allison O'Neill, Guy54, Lala Thomas, Travis and Nisa Hunter, Miguel Myers ATX, Mandy, Jennifer Perez, Pierre Lombard, Carissa, TJ Bronson, Gabrielle Trevino, Spooky Mom, Andy Teague, Applin Ontiveros, Karima Rhodes, Antonio Huerta, Kimberly Kleindienst, Will Brown, Linda, Sydney Smith, Osvaldo Soto, Jonathan Booth, Bobby Holmes, Donna Eason, J.D. Rizak, Molly Gerhardt, Armand Spasto, Aaron Aguirre, Eggy, William Barry, Brittany, Charity Oxner, Amanda Six, Mandy Rainwater, Diego Moreno, and Garrett Rogers. Hey. Hey. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo. Thank you. Woo. <laughs> We could not appreciate you anymore, and we can't possibly thank you enough for your nah. support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the v- vampire thing. Yeah, yeah, they often have them. <laughs> right. Not here. He didn't have any. Yeah. He, he did not. But if he did, they'd have straws in them. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>